Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, another live stream. Um, do let me know if you can uh, see me uh, and or hear me. I'm hoping that both things will be the case, but uh, do let me know in the chat if uh, that is the case. That would be very, very reassuring. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm always, whenever I... Uh, well, whenever I do live streams, but particularly when I'm like, oh, cool, I'm going to do that uh, on the uh, on the live channel so that I don't, you know, bother uh, bother anyone who doesn't want to uh, see them. Uh, then uh, I'm always like, oh, I don't think uh, I'm very pessimistic about who's going to rock up. But uh, I'm, I'm very glad that we have uh, some folks here. So do say hello in the chat if you would like to do that. Uh, several things to do today. Uh, in that we have, uh, I've got a bundle of things which I've jotted down and put my notebook somewhere uh, to, to 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 address some things that I thought might be interesting to chat about. Um, more than happy to uh, take suggestions from the from the chat as well if people have got uh, things that that you want to chat about as well. Um, and then at some point, I have got to play. Uh, this cost me seven pounds uh, and ninety nine p. I'm I'm mildly excited uh, and mildly absolutely not excited. I, I have very. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what my expectations for this game are. Uh, we have oh, George Orwell's Animal Farm, the video game, uh, which I have no idea what to expect from this. But I thought. You know, once we've once you've had a little chat, we'll do that. Uh, oh, amazing. Len, uh, Len Toff has said, hello, we can see you uh, and hear you. Uh, thank you so much for, for that reassurance, Len. And thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, I, I did. I did an another one of these streams. Uh, what was it? Last week or? Yeah, no, it would have been last Thursday that I um, did one of these f uh, for the first time in, in a little while again. Uh, and they're always good fun. They're the they're the kind of thing that I'm never too sure how they're going to go. But um, but actually, I always uh, really really enjoy them. Um, there's a couple of topics that I wanted to kick off uh, by talking about this week. Uh, let me go to my internet thing. Um, so there's a couple of topics that I wanted to start talking about this week, which are ones that I have covered in. Uh, videos uh, in relatively recently, you know, in the in the last couple of months, um, but that have flashed up for whatever reason in the news again uh, lately. The first is sort of two things. So very recently, this is going to be slightly UK centric, I'm afraid. Uh, so I hope that this isn't uh, that f for those of you elsewhere in the world, that this isn't, you know, miles too remote from your, uh, your world. But, um, but the first thing that I wanted to return to is the ever, um, the ever brimming discourse, uh, surrounding cancel culture, where, uh, on the UK, we ha on the UK side of the, um, uh the pond as it were the um uh two seconds let me move move this so it still looks so it looks cool uh on the uk side of the atlantic uh the 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 conservative party have once again been uh banging the banging the uh the cancel culture cancel culture drum uh whilst on the american side of the atlantic it has been uh it has been been the left that have uh been doing so and i want to explore both those so what day is it today it's currently thursday the um 20th i want to say 20th thursday the, thursday the 20th of may um as so this was actually 5 days ago now uh the oliver dowden who uh, is the culture sector secretary uh, in the UK. So that's like, so he's in the cabinet, which is slightly different to the cabinet system in the US in that anyone who's 
in the cabinet has to be a member of parliament but um works in a sort of similar way i guess uh, in that different people have different responsibilities for different things and uh oliver dowden is uh, in charge of culture she's the uh secretary of state i believe for uh well culture secretary secretary sorry um i can't think who it is that's in charge of like the whole department for culture media dig- digital media culture and sport uh but he has written um and and like this is going to seem silly when we uh first look at it so it's important to uh get across that this is like a really important person in a really important newspaper um so the telegraph being like you know one of the most circulated newspapers in the uk uh, and oliver dowden being a senior member of the government has written an argument uh, written an article which began which is headlined we won't allow britain's history to be ca- cancelled i want to take not a maoist but a moorist approach it's clever uh to heritage i want more statues erected and this comes up again this guy this guy um, coming on, someone in the last uh, stream last week mentioned uh, the sort of statues debate, which has been brimming in the UK um, and very much echoes some of the statue debates in the US surrounding like Confederate statues, but tends to be about uh, sort of slave traders. Um, Oliver Dowden has come out in favour of more statues. Uh, that's that's the solution to our problem. Uh, and more chapters added to our national narrative, which is something which... He says he's keen on, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I, I want to read some of this because it's just got like amaz- some amazing lines in it. Uh, I'm proud of our nation's heritage. I don't say this just as culture secretary, but as someone who happily spends their weekends exploring every part of it, which I'm, I'm sure being culture secretary means you sort of get the opportunity to do that in a way that lots of people don't. Um, I'm not alone in this passion. Our heritage unites us as a country and draws visitors to our islands by the millions. Uh, And as someone whose love of heritage was learned, not inherited, I am deeply committed to ensuring it is available to everyone. Uh, And I I particularly like his, his... I don't really know what he means by this idea of, like, learning your love of heritage rather than inheriting it. Is that, like... I know, obviously... Uh, we're currently in an era where conservatives like to pretend they're a lot more working class than they are. Um, but generally, that's not what we're talking about. When You know, it's a form of inheritance, I guess, but not one that people are quite so... Uh, what's the opposite of snobby? Um, I don't know. Just quite so bothered about. Um, but when so... So when coronavirus threatened to decimate the cultural landscape, uh, he stepped in. So he talks about this whole cultural um, recovery fund... Uh, and how he's, he's they've given a load of money to cultural organisations, which is, is good in many ways. Um, but a lot of it is coming with strings attached. Um, so uh, then we get to our sort of confident nations face up to their history. They don't airbrush it. Instead, they protect their heritage and use it to educate the public about the past, which is good. Right. That is actually the, the thing to do. And that is why when we have, you know, statues of slave traders, or whatever, um, it's often suggested, you know, you could put a plaque by it. That would be a, a compromise. Uh, but it's generally not a compromise that, uh, that the Conservative Party in the UK are all that interested in. Um, uh, and, you know, he take he obviously uh, quotes some polling that um, in particular, Black Britons uh, don't want to see our heritage pulled down or hidden from view uh, because, you know, that being because a lot of this debate is uh, surrounding uh, slavery and statues of slave traders and other ways in which um, slavery sort of has weaved its way into the UK in the past. Um, uh, And where is it? Where's our more statues thing? I just really enjoyed. uh, Oh, where is it? Where is it? I want to, here it is. So this is the sort of the bit that gets quoted at the beginning. Um, I want to take not a Maoist, but a Moorist approach to our heritage. I want more statues erected, more chapters added to our national narrative and more understanding of it. In short, more history, not less. The point is to expand the conversation, not to shut it down. Um, I just love the idea of just throwing statues at absolutely everything. Um, because part of the problem is that that isn't what happens. And that sort of acknowledges that 
statues that aren't like a neutral record of history, as I think I was saying in the um, stream last week, um, you know, statues exist to sort of celebrate people, don't they? Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, this this amused me mildly. Um, uh, just this idea. Uh, uh, and maybe we'll come back to our other uh, cancel culture thing a little bit later because I think I want to play some of George Orwell's Animal Farm uh, the video game uh, but do say hello in the chat if you are if you are here um, it is lovely to hear from you uh, and to, to hear your thoughts on stuff uh, so uh, okay let's do this let's do this so I don't know how I first came across this uh, as an idea doing that okay just making sure i'm recording things to my computer as well in case we lose it um so yeah i so i don't know how i first came across this as being a thing um in fact i think it might have been an article in the guardian uh like reviewing it um and i'm not entirely sure why this exists uh a video game based on george orwell's animal farm um but my interest was piqued, and so I thought I would uh, I would take a look. Um, I will say I've had a very brief look at it. I did very briefly load it up so I could check that the audio wasn't uh, sort of either blisteringly loud or completely, uh, you know, non-existent. Um, but I, uh, but other than that, I hello Cam's files in the chat. Uh, come from that chat now as well. Hello, thank you for joining us um i hope you are well uh it's always lovely to have uh, returners in the uh in the chat uh coming back to coming back for a little bit more um but yeah so uh so so this game uh i think yeah popped up in a guardian article i believe like a review of it uh and i mean the reason it exists is because um this year in the uk is 70 years since the death of george orwell so that means that uh, anything that was created in his life, it's now possible to uh, sort of recreate, f uh, well, to, you know, adapt into something or to, you know, sell a copy of 1984 or create a film of uh, 1984 or create a video game of Animal Farm. Um, I don't think uh, that... He I'm pretty sure that the copyright is slightly different in other countries. Is that correct? Um, someone might know in the chat and be able to tell me. Oh, hello. Hello, Osama Hamada. Thank you for joining us. I believe I believe you were here last week in the uh, in the other in the live stream on the other channel. So thank you, thank you for being here as well. Um, some familiar faces is always nice. Um, what did I want to loot? Does anyone know? Maybe someone knows in the chat. But I'll also have a quick look. Uh, zombie ruler. Won't be in the chat much as has been in the background. But I'll do some horrible PhD paperwork. Oh, sorry to hear that you've got the worst part of any sort of studying thing, whether it's PhD or whatever. Um, although particularly I found with the PhD is is not is the yeah the weird bits of paperwork you suddenly have to do um, where you're like uh, updating people for um, uh, you know like things where you have to be like. Five out of ten for this year is how happy I am on how things went this year. Um, and being semi-sure that all that stuff's going to go in a folder and no one's ever going to look at it again. But it still takes you, um, you know, multiple uh, multiple hours to fill out. So all all our thoughts and solidarities are uh, with Zombie Ruler 0123 while they um, do that. Uh and hello, everyone else as well. Hello, Fox Gloved. Uh, hi, Tom. First time catching you live. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, yep, yeah, it's been a little... It's I took probably a year's break from doing live streams after doing a little run of them. Um, but I used to really enjoy it. So after I did the live stream for uh, the 200,000 subscribers and the main channel, I thought I would... I thought I'd do it again. So thank you, everyone, for joining me. And thank you also for joining us Q session lesu. I've probably butchered that and I'm really sorry. That's my fault for uh terrible uh language uh skills. Um 
uh, although it's it's possibly like a sort of super meme name in a different language. Uh, uh, Asam Hamad is saying that I'm right. Is that about... Um, I was... Uh, I'll come to your question in a second, Braddon. Is that okay? Because um, I very quickly want to look up. Um, does anyone know what the copyright term in the US is? Because I was trying to think when... Oh, so it is Life of the Author plus 70 years in... Oh, but for works created after 1978. Um, so maybe it is... Uh, maybe Orwell is out of copyright in the US and in the UK and elsewhere. Because I wondered whether if, it, if, it, if his work was still copyrighted um in the US whether that would mean we'd have a couple of extra years um before uh lots and lots of releases but oh no but it seems like it might be might be the same oh and hello Sienna in the chat as well hello um in the US in the USA pub works published in 1925 are free just now so yeah there must be a little while until oh may, is it publication date in the US rather than death of so in in the uk it's based on like 70 years since the death since the author dies um and hello hello uh llewellyn nipud in griffiths welcome and welcome thank you for joining us everyone um so yeah so all well in the uk at least and i think in the eu uh as this guardian article tells us is out of copyright um so one result of that is and i haven't seen many ca many attempts to cash in yet um, but one attempt is uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm, uh, the video game, uh, which I'm looking forward to playing in a moment. I have no, no idea what to expect. It might be amazing. It might be amazing. I, As I say, I've very briefly gone on it just to check the sound, and it's not like a first-person shooter or a or anything. I It feels like a sort of storybook. Um, we'll come to that in a second, though, because we do have a question in the chat. So, uh, what do we have? Uh, God damn it, philosophy, new, new philosophy tube in 15 minutes as well. What an evening. Oh, I hadn't seen that. Uh, Abigail has a habit of putting things out. Uh, if, 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 I, if I plan something, she'll put a new video out. Uh, but um, So, yeah, Disney might have done something in the... Uh, that's not intentional, by the way. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh uh, Osama Hamad is saying, I think Disney might have done something to the copyright law in the US to keep the rights for Mickey Mouse. So, yeah, that's been a big motivator uh, in the US for making copyright longer and longer and longer has been because, yeah, because Disney don't want to lose the rights to Mickey Mouse. Um, although uh, I think it's sort of looking like they might not be able to extend it any longer. Um, and so and one result of that might be be um that and that well and that's length something like for um uh one sort of fallout of that is that's why we're currently seeing everything by disney at the moment is currently um has mickey mouse on it um because they're very clearly trying to establish that as uh as a trademark, which it, which it already will be, it already will be a trademark. But to keep a trademark, you have to like really clearly defend it. Um, so one reason they will be uh, doing that is so that when uh, when it falls out of copyright, just as a piece of creativity, I guess, um, it will become easier to uh, to defend. So yeah. Um, uh, Llewellyn, Nipin and Griffith saying in the chat that um that the original version of Mickey should be available in a year or two. Um, so yeah, I think one of one of the ways they'll try and still defend it is by having it as a trademark rather than just as a sort of creative thing. Um, Braddon has asked uh, if I have any good post-colonial book recommendations. Um, I'm always a fan for any topic if you're approaching it. I won't say always a fan, but any topic if you're approaching it for the very first time is there is a series of books called uh, 
very short introductions uh, by Oxford University Press. And it's a slightly strange series in that most of them are an introduction to whatever the topic is. So that is sort of one uh, key focus of, of the book. But most of them also try to put forward a new argument about whatever the topic is. So that can sometimes be a little bit confusing. Um, I have read the post-colonial, uh, post-colonial, post-colonialism one. Uh, I think part as I was preparing to write my uh, video on the topic, um, and uh, and I, I seem to remember it being quite interesting. Um, one of the things that the uh, post-colonialism one focuses on is um, making the argument that post-colonialism is a practice uh, and is a form of activism and emerged merged from resistance uh, as much as being an academic discipline in which we study things through the lens of post-colonialism. Um, you know, not that it's not that as well, but try- really trying to find those roots for it, I guess, and really... Um, uh, really foreground those roots in the sort of uh, various anti-clon- anti-colonial um, movements. Uh, Christopher Butler wrote that one. Um, I'm trying to think of other good, uh, other good books. I can, uh, I can try and take a quick look for my script on post-colonialism if you would like, and have a little look. Oh, I don't know what I've tried to load up there. Um, and try and see what I might be able to load up. Um, I mean, a great text in terms of thinking about how uh, geography and power sort of interrelate is always going to be um, uh, Saeed's Orientalism, um, which, hey, you can get a discount on it here at B-U-U-K-S.co.uk, a website I have never heard of. Um, so take your chances there. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's always a great book in that it looks at, you know, how are the ways in which uh, people in the West, for want of a better word, perceive uh, people that don't live in the West. And in fact, is everyone okay with me sticking for this topic for a moment? Because um, I've got quite a good uh example which whenever which if ever i'm in a seminar room teaching post-colonialism is always the uh clip that i go with uh hey look that's me that's cool um what is it indiana jones uh if 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 it's a sort of like cultural analysis sort of angle you're going going for then um Oh, what's it called? Chase. Oh, sword versus gun. That's it. Um, then this is the sort of key example that I tend to show because I think um, as a sort of piece of culture, it just really shows uh, what what we're sort of working with and what some of the things we're looking at when we're looking for a post-colonial, uh, looking at a piece of culture through a post-colonial uh, lens. Let me know in the chat, anyone who... Um, uh is able to whether the audio is okay for this is this an acceptable acceptable volume um so this is oh sorry this is a clip from uh indiana jones rage of the lost ark i don't know if anyone's i'm sure people have seen this um and it's a really interesting example of uh some of the stuff that saeed talks about actually in that um, if we watch it through, we very clearly have our kind of like uh, American hero, our sort of from the West, uh, who is like on his own facing off against um, hundreds and hundreds of these sort of, uh, you know, strange, mysteriously coded uh, people. Oh, people saying that audio is fine. Um, that's great. Thank, thank you, everyone, uh, for the reassurance. Um, and this bit always, this bit always jumps out as like a, there's very much a like, uh, they're, they're sort of coded as not clean and 
Uh, one thing you'll particularly notice is that a lot of the sort of bad folks uh, have faces covered, which, you know, in some ways is culturally appropriate, but in others is just a, really dehumanizes um, them. Um, and what you quite often see is that they're all, there's lots of them and they're very um, physicalized, but they're also portrayed as a little bit thick. Um, like there twice. Uh, there's, there's this bit where, you know, she just hides there and then just twangs him on the thing with the pan um, and sort of, you know, uses uh, her brain against his brawn to sort of get one over. And then this sort of hiding in the basket and running past. Uh, and also interesting that they are being, like, led by... I think they're German. Someone might be able to remind me in the, the chat of the plot to, um, to uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. So, so they must be German, but they're sort of the, like, brains of the operation. Um, and then, eventually, we get to this, which is the sort of big moment from the film, right? This is the bit that everyone remembers... Uh, well, this and the opening the box and the thing coming out. But this is just like the perfect example. Where it's like, look at all this strange stuff that this other guy's doing. And then, you know, uh, the uh, sort of technological brilliance of the American to just pull out the gun, shoot, and just casually walk off. Um, uh, what's Sienna saying? Also, the relationship, the relation between them and the Germans uh, in the film. Uh, the gaming den saying, and there's a French dude too. Um, but yeah, all of the sort of people with uh, agency and that come up with all the ideas in the film are white europeans i think i'm right in saying i've not seen it in a little while but um uh so it's so the film is sort of set in where is it set <laughs> that's a good question actually um is it set in egypt let's have a look Dr. René Belloch is the um, uh, the French the French person apparently. Um, I can't find out where it's meant to be set. It is e is it Egypt? I'm not imagining that. Um, although that's kind of interesting that it sort of just has this very generic like m Middle Eastern setting. Cairo, Cairo does ring a bell. Cairo does ring a bell. Um, I was just having a look. Um, but the fact that, I mean, the fact that we can't quite, can't quite work it out sort of says a, says a lot that we sort of get the, um, that it's more about creating a sort of general vibe of otherness and um, mysteriousness and danger than it is about actually saying anything about... Um, about Egypt itself, and so it becomes just the backdrop to the adventures of uh, Indy and uh, whatever any of, whatever any of the other characters in this one uh, have. Uh, the gaming dens is agreeing that um, yeah, it's set in, set in Egypt. Um, so that's always a clip that if if ever I have to sort of do a very quick intro to post colonialism. Um, I always think that serves as quite a good one, just because there's just so many aspects of it that just work as a... And it's relatively recent. And, and part of me wonders um, to what extent, like how well that represents Cairo at that particular period of time as well. Um, because when it must be set in... Oh, well, so it's set in the 1940s, isn't it? Um... So, yeah, you look at pictures of Cairo at that point in time and you have, you know, you have shops. You Like, it's not just um, 
sort of dusty marketplaces. Uh, so it's sort of, yeah. So I always think that's a really interesting example of how, of a sort of text which carries through a lot of the, uh, f those sort of colonial ideas. Um, and what, the film came out in the 80s maybe, did it? Um, uh, Llewellyn and I put in Griffith saying, uh, apparently that sword gunshot wasn't planned, partly because Harrison Ford uh, had a fever and it was easier to film. Yes, I do know this actually. Um, I'm saying just using it, that's uh, what they chose to do after all. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's even, that's even more interesting. Uh, and yeah, and the, and the, the gaming den saying that, uh, that the, the background is just sort of like the Orient, uh, in ways which do tie in with a lot of those ideas that, um, uh, Edward Said discusses in, uh, Orientalism, uh, so I know that wasn't a book, but but Orientalism probably would be the book that I would recommend to anyone that uh, has to suddenly write something about post-colonialism because I think it it's just well written as well. Saeed um, is uh, is a fantastic writer uh, and a very powerful writer uh, and but very communicative. I'm trying to find a photo. There's a sort of semi-famous photo of him. Uh, as a sort of uh, relevant photo for the day, here is Edward Said uh, at the Palestinian border throwing stones. Um, uh, so uh, Brad in saying, I love Said's Orientalism. Uh, sorry, that means that the, the book recommendation I gave you is one that you've already, already done, uh, already read. Uh, I also really enjoyed, actually, one that I read whilst I was putting together my post-colonialism video was, uh, what's it called? Uh, is it post-colonialism and avatar? There's a series of books, which actually are probably better than the very short introduction ones in some ways, uh, called film theory in practice, film theory in practice. That was called, and they're a really good series of books, which will, um, take a topic, uh, like, well, take a sort of theoretical lens, so post-colonialism or Marxism or uh, I'm trying to think of other ones like feminism. I think I'm pretty sure there's one. Oh, and there's a there's a uh, uh, psychoanalysis one. So there's all kinds of different lenses. And then they take a film that sort of, you know, fits with that lens. Um, and it's quite a good it's quite a good little series that actually I would recommend um, that I would recommend uh particularly if you're looking to pick up one of these frameworks to do a sort of cultural analysis with it because they sort of do it as they go so you sort of get a sense of how to use the ideas as well as just how to um as well as just getting them sort of conceptually if that makes sense um sienna mob saying uh that yeah she used um avatar when uh doing some post-colonialism which I think I bring up Avatar in, in my video. Briefly, I think. I think my main focus is Black Panther. But um, but Avatar's really... In yeah, no, I draw on that book and then I, I discuss Avatar very briefly. Avatar being a sort of interesting example because it tries to sort of do, do a good representation of colonialism. Like, in many ways, that's its, like, intent. Um, but it still views it through the eyes of the person that is sort of coded as our uh, colonist, right? Or as our settler or as our sort of person discovering, um, even though he then gets uh, sort of, you know, he puts on the avatar suit. I've not actually watched it, so I didn't, but he puts on like a sort of avatar suit thing and gets turned into one of the aliens, doesn't he? Um, and that's interesting in that, that, yeah, that it's sort of trying do you think but it's obviously got a very specific we we quite often when we're analyzing cultural stuff is we sort of ask you know who does it seem like the intended audience for this is um and it is obviously very much made for uh a audience of former of people descended from 
people that did some colonizing, I would say, in a very broad sense, um, because that's the perspective from which it is viewed and it is sort of uh, assumed that prior to starting watching the film, you know, we as an audience don't have sympathy for um, the colonized and that we sort of gain that as we go through. Um, yeah, Sienna's saying that it takes a colonist to actually be the hero and it's through his eyes that you see the experience of the colonized. Um, okay, I'm going to take us over to some George Orwell's Animal Farm, the video game. Uh, let me know audio for this. Uh, it does day and night in the menu thing, so that's cool. Uh, let me know how the audio is, and we're going to see what this game entails. Windmill. A oh, windmill being important. It's, I mean, it's only been... Oh, sorry. Is that okay? Can we see hear that silky um, voice that is, uh, what's it called, sort of giving us the, um, uh, giving us the uh, narration there. Um, the windmill, so it's been, I mean, it's only been a month and a half, two months since I read this book because I was reading it for the video, but um, I can't quite remember everything. Okay. I don't actually remember that in the book, but already thinking of the beer waiting for him in the kitchen. Oh. Okay. Okay, so this is where I got to when I loaded up to check the sound. And you sort of get this magnifying glass. And depleted. Oh. And windmill. So I think bit low. Bit low. Okay, I can turn it up. Sorry, you missed some beautiful narration. Um, this should now be louder. Let me know. Um, okay, so Mr. Jones is waiting for the thing. And then I think we sort of get to... I don't know what this means. We don't have very much food, I think. And that there's no... We don't have a windmill yet. Uh, we can question or we can obey Mr. Jones. Uh, I'm... I'm going to go with chickens to begin with. Uh, we're going to question. We're going to question authority. Uh, and we're going to see where this takes us. Did he mean to leave the doors unlatched? Okay, he makes those mistakes more often lately. He moses the crow, I remember. What's the hen? Oh, I missed the hen's name. Okay. The hens. I don't remember the hens being a particularly big part of the book. Old Major. Cool. Okay, Old Major being like the the sort of Karl Marx of Animal Farm. Um, okay, I can question again. Can I... Sh what sheep? Join. Oh, three options. Okay. Question, encourage, join. Um, we're going to... I mean, do... Give, give me uh, instructions if you... I'm going to encourage. I think I'm going to in, uh, incite some rebellion. It's time. The others are already in the barn. I like Boxer. Boxer's like my favourite character. So, um, I feel like we might just do what Boxer wants us to do quite a lot. Old Major is about to speak. Is it safe to go? What if Jones comes back out and notices we're missing? Oh, the hens are the Ukrainians. Okay. Is it the is it the Ukrainian edition of the novel that's like the famous one? I like I no no uh, pre preface to it. I can't remember. Um. What if Jones comes back out? Okay, actually, let's look it up. Uh, hens. Uh, animal farm. I don't know much about Ukraine. Oh, so the hen's the only group that shows any resistance to Napoleon. In his speech, Major specifically criticises the taking of the hen's eggs, demands that this inhumane practice stops. Okay, the hens... Oh, the hens represent the kulaks, okay. Okay. Do the hens die, then? We'll find out, we'll find out. Um... 
from what I've read, I think this is, uh, I think it's like a, has multiple endings. The pop-up book aesthetic is brilliant. I do, I, I do, I do like the, uh, like the, the illustrations. Uh, so yes, okay, so the hens represent the kulaks who, uh, sort of resisted Stalin. Um. <laughs> Sorry, uh. Llewellyn no, no putting Griffiths in the chat saying that uh, although they've read 1984 and Wigan Fear, this is their first experience of Animal Farm. Um, I mean, this is the definitive uh, edition. I, I, the book, I'm sure, will be nothing after this. It will be a terrible... Uh, <laughs> terrible... <laughs> okay. Oh, he's poured his third pint. Okay. Loves to drink, does, does Mr. Jones. Uh, he won't come out again this evening. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, lead, follow, go in. I feel like, you know when a game gives you an option, um, but <laughs> clearly all of the options just mean the same thing. I feel like that's what we're getting here. Um, I'm going to go with Boxer because I, I, I like... I don't want to give away spoilers now that I know not everyone knows the story in the chat, but I like Boxer. Um... Okay. Okay, here is old Major. Uh, comrades, I'm very old. Oh no, Marx was German. I can't do a German accent. I can't, I, I can't do accents at all. One thing you'll notice in my videos is that the only time I've ever done an accent is uh, when I did the French accent, which was meant to be bad on purpose. Okay. Comrades, I'm very old. I doubt I have many more days to spend with you. Before I go, I want to tell you what I have learned. Our lives are miserable. This is kind of funny. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. We begin working very young and we die before we can enjoy our old age. No animal in England knows the meaning of happiness. No animal in England is free. Uh... See, I'm saying I love how the crow is named Moses and represents religion. Very smart. Uh, I feel like, Sienna, you are very much the animal farm expert in the chat today. Um, so please, please do give us all your interpretations. Um, I'm trying to work out what's an option. Is the cat an option? Oh. oh, okay. Dogs can disagree. This must be Snowball, I'm going to say. Agree. Doubt. Is the chicken a... Hen, sorry, still no, okay. Um Agree, disagree. I'm gonna agree. No animal in England is free. Thank you very much. Napoleon, hear ha! I do have to do different voices for them. Um <laughs> I can't do voices. We are only given as much food as will keep us alive. While Jones and his wife eat and drink. I'm not. I don't uh, and sleep in beds. Squealer! Uh, listen! Humans are the only creatures that consume without producing. Do we? I make... I make YouTube videos, thank you very much, Mr. Karl Marx, Old Major. Um, uh, they give no milk. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I see. Um, well... I'd, I'd question that. Uh, they lay no eggs. They're too weak to pull the plow. I would be too weak to pull the plow. Oh, okay. Okay. Agree is now sheep. No, is he not an option? It's quite diff. The controls are quite difficult. You have to get very exact onto things. Okay. Be brave. I agree. I. I'm up for inciting. I wonder if there is just a really quick. Uh, ending whereby you just don't have the revolution in the first place. Uh, we bear we we bear new lambs every year. They all go to the butcher. Humans do nothing for us. We do sheep. Sheep's are fun. Uh, we animals could manage ourselves much better. Here we go. Here is the animal version of the Communist Manifesto. It is the anthem of animals who long to be free. 
Sorry, it's the Animal Internationale, isn't it? Beasts of England. Beasts of Ireland. Beasts of every land and climb. Oh, okay. Study or sing or cheer. Study, sing or cheer. Um, study. Let's study the works of Old Major. Uh, box wonders what climb is. Good question. Uh, and Benjamin. Someone was saying, um, in was it in the chat? Oh no, I think it was on Patreon. Someone was ask, saying about uh, all all well novels and books and stuff always have like really grumpy old men in them. And Benjamin is very much our grumpy old man for this for this one. Um, not an action-packed game, this one, I think. <laughs> Unless it suddenly takes a turn in a minute. Uh, so a beast from another climb might be a camel. I'd like to meet a camel. What's that racket? Who led a fox into the yard? A of pellets from Mr. Jones' shotgun bury themselves in the barn wall. Can we hear the narration bits? Because that is actual voices when it's an orange, I think. No one is hurt, but it's a near thing. Okay, back to sleep, back to sleep, back to sleep. It does seem to sometimes give you options that are just obviously not options. Um, but I'm going with Boxer because... Oh, am I? Yeah. Because I like, because I like Boxer. We've had a great deal to think about. Uh, and Jones will be angry if he catches us out here. Well, the hens are back. Uh, and it's his own fault he left the hen house unlatched. Benjamin is like the nihilist. He's just sort of like uh, super, super grumpy the whole time. Which is a vibe that comes through in um, 1984 an awful lot. It is very much a book about... A, like, you can tell... That Orwell is getting older and a bit crotchety uh, in his writing of it. Uh, he's getting more careless every day. He forgets to feed us. Oh, I thought the dogs were. Oh. Three days later, old major dies in his sleep. Well, that was. I'm gonna say that that sudden twist from the like casual chat about the food <laughs> to this was not the best storytelling. I'm where people have worked really hard on this. I don't want to... Um, and I'm the seventh person ever to stream it on YouTube. I, I looked up earlier. I'm not planning on streaming lots of video games, by the way. Don't get too excited about that. Uh, three days later, Old Major dies in his sleep. At the bottom of the orchard. Old Major's Rebellion must still take place, even if we don't live to see it. So Snowball is like Trotsky. Uh in this uh, analogy uh, it will come in the time of our children oh does Napoleon want to put it off or our children's children cheer is that the only option I've got cheer cheer or cheer a lot of the time you seem to get options in this game that are not options let's go for the sheep this time because we've done a lot of We've done a lot of boxer. Um, we are ready. The time will come. As soon as Jones is not looking. Okay. We're back here. Okay, we haven't been fed. We haven't been fed. Oh, no one has been fed. The storehouse is empty. Things have got... Things appear to have got worse for our... There's a lot more backstory, I feel, in this one than there was in the actual book. Uh, we will fight him. Animals, join me in battle. Hey, the cows! We've not had cows yet. This is exciting. Um, new. Uh, yeah, Snowball represents the fix. And then, like, uh, yeah, like, Snow, yeah, and then, um, Napoleon, sort of, uh, Stalin, isn't he? Someone in my, uh, in my, uh, in the comments to my, uh, all well, Peterson video. Someone was really uh, kept, kept was very certain that uh, Big Brother was not meant to be Stalin, um, which, which 
just seems like a really weird hill to die on when like something's just obviously not the case. Um, I wonder if you can make snowball in charge. Oh, okay, right. So this is our goal. This is a good goal. We're gonna try and we're gonna see what happens if um, if we can make snowball stay in charge instead. Okay. Uh, so we thought the rebellion would not be years. We can wait no longer, or we will starve. What is wrong with you beasts? Am I going to have to shoot you all for rabies? It just very suddenly... Oh, what's happening? What? It's a bit confusing, this game. Okay, Boxer, Napoleon, Snowball. You will all feel the whip. Comrades, this is our moment. Why would he just suddenly be beating... It's been a while since I've been on a farm, but I don't think... Okay, lead, defend. Lead. So we want snow... We want... Uh, we want Snowball to win, I think. Um, at least in the in the spirit of Orwell, we are going to try and make uh, Snowball win. So let's lead with Snowball, which is true to the book, I believe. Um, Mr. Jones is getting a pitchfork. He's going to stab someone. I'm also going to very quickly... Sorry, this is going to make the sound stop, I think. I'm going to very quickly tweet that we're uh, that we're playing Animal Farm the uh, video game sorry this is this is boring to watch uh, I just forgot to tweet the uh, forgot to tweet forgot to tweet the stream uh, okay I've done that I've done that. Okay, so Mr. Jones is getting a pitchfork. He's going to stab someone. Go stand in his way. have never seen animals like this. They've all fled. Jones is left on his own. That was easy. I mean, this is very true to book. I wonder, I wonder at what point you can go off. Um. Oh, Sienna's saying that. I did see. I watched the first couple of minutes about that. Um. So. The pubs reopened in... I, it's the kind of thing that I never normally watch. And then the pubs reopened on Monday and I spent quite a lot of Tuesday not feeling very well. Um, and uh, I did watch the first maybe 10 minutes of that sort of conversation thing. The bit that I watched was sort of Jordan Peterson feeling very strong, like confident. Uh, Stephen Fry just looking a little bit like, or oh, actually wasn't sure whether he should have signed up to this. Um but maybe we'll watch a bit of that later. I'll jot that down in a second. Um, let's let's get to a crucial plot turning point in the game. Uh, okay, so they've all fled. Jones has left on his own. Curse the loss of you, cowards. Defend, attack. Do we think if I just keep clicking snowball, we can make snowball win? Do we think... Uh, Attack, so what is it? Attack, defend. Attack again. Defend. Attack. Okay, attack. I wonder if it doesn't make a difference who you... This is thrilling, thrilling combat uh, mechanics in this game. Let him feel the full wrath of the animals. Jones runs away. So have we done it? Oh, Stephen Fry really grows into it. Uh, okay, maybe we'll get a chance to watch get a chance to watch some of that in a little bit. Um, because I think I read that I think that the game is about three hours. So I was thinking I might play like maybe an hour or so of it today, and then do some others in do 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 the rest of it in some future weeks. Okay, the animals are worried, but I think we've won. Uh. Colonel Calmunism is saying, I have to leave, but just wanted to say I really appreciate your videos as a general jumping off point uh, to more learning. It's joy to catch your streams. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here. Have a wonderful evening slash morning slash whatever it is where you are. Um, oh, yes. Okay. Sienna's saying maybe if you keep clicking Snowball, he would die in the revolution. I, I, think, I think we've got past the revolution. I wonder whether you can't really go much wrong before it. 
You must keep still until your flank has healed. It's boring. Your tree, but remember, you have struck a blow against the humans. Snowball recovers slowly from his wounds. Okay, that's good. We want we want Snowball to be a healthy healthy boy. Uh, you are a hero, Snowball. I also want. Bo okay, so goals goals for this are Snowball stays leader of the farm and Boxer doesn't die. That's the two things I would like out of this. Uh, hear me, Snowball will have extra rations until he's well. Oh yeah, because we did keep just throwing Snowball in the fight, didn't we? Uh, that was a costly battle. Next time, Jones will be better arms. Look, Snowball looks fine here. Oh, you can't see where I'm clicking. Snowball looks fine in the um, picture and not in the... We must prepare for it. I am still enjoying the aesthetic of this. I think it's it's nicely drawn. I think maybe it's not for grown-ups. Uh, that is a question for later. I think those fades could be slower. This is Jones Sorry. Packs a bag and flees. I feel like those fades could be slower. It just sort of throws you from one part of the story to another. Um, particularly when Old Major died. It was a bit like, oh, okay. That's, that's happened now. The animals wander through buildings where they have never been allowed. Look at this place. Looks bigger without Mr. Jones inside. Why has the crow been inside? Like of all the animals to have managed to go inside the um go inside the, the house, the crow seems probably the least likely. <laughs> Not until we're hams. That's a funny joke. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you can see it with the mouse when it's like this, you just can't see it. Okay. Um, I, I don't even know what I can click. Okay. Kick the bear. Mourn. <laughs> or consume. Oh, okay. So, okay. Sienna, our resident uh, animal farm expert. Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, because Boxer is the, like, hard-working Russian people. Okay, yeah, we want, we want Snowball as leader and Boxer alive. Those are our, those are going to be our goals for our playthrough. Oh, I'm not going to do, we're only doing one playthrough, um, of Animal Farm, the video game. Okay, I can consume, sorry, there is, like, a book just below where my head is on the screen. Uh, we can mourn, I sort of want to do that because it's sort of a bit funny. I'm going to mourn. Okay. No, no, we're going to read the book. Leave the books to me. Yes, read them, Snowball. The Campaigns of Caesar. A well-read um, farmer. Can't be much help with a farm, exactly. Those strong vibes of... Farmer Jones would not have read this. It's just... Um, it's just useful for the uh, for the plot. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Lowe saying, "Shall we eulogise this ham?" Sorry, I think we've. I don't. Th I don't think this is a game where it lets you go back and then do the other things. I would like. We should have eulogised the ham. I changed my mind at the very last moment. Exactly. Strategy for the next time the humans attack. Sounds good. Oh, can we? Can we mourn the ham? Yes. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready to mourn the ham? Will it have sad music, do we think? I knew that ham when she was a piglet. How does Napoleon get all the funny lines in this game? We should bury her. She can rest in the orchard beside old Major. <laughs> Snowball making sure his theory is on point for practice. Um... She can rest in the orchard. Okay, we can wear boots. We can kick over the beer. And probably get get drunk, presumably. We did that. Oh, oh, did we eat the book? Oh, I thought when it said consume, the book over here, I thought that meant like read like read. I think it actually did mean eat it. Um sleep. 
I mean, really, we should be going outside because... Okay, let's read the handbook. Oh, no. Has the game crashed? I'm still streaming, aren't I? I'm going to have to load up Steam again. And I hope it saved our progress. So let's go, let's go, back, to the, let's go back to the chat. Um, oh, eulogizing the ham apparently just crashes the game. Right, this should be the right... How did this game crash? Surely this isn't like a... Is this still going to be an okay size? Yeah, it is. This can't be a very stressful stressful game for the computer. How do we reckon it saved it? Oh, okay. Okay, we're okay. Shall we eulogize the ham one more time? Uh, Quantum Fire saying, Yo, 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 dude, where's the base? Is it not? Do we need it louder? I can make... I can make the uh, the game louder if that's if that's helpful. Um, okay, let's mourn the ham one more time. I knew that ham when she was a piglet. We should bury her. She can rest in the orchard beside old Major. Okay, let's read the handbook and hope this doesn't. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. This seems to be more of a game now, which is nice. Okay. At least three animals have been executed, would be bloodbath. Oh, is this different and Many animals have confessed to treason. Each of the seven laws has changed. Dogs teach new beliefs to political dissidents. The song beasts of England is outlawed. Birds oversee behaviour on the farm. Okay, so... How does this work? So we've got... Um... This, I think, is this like the different endings we can have? This is... Oh, so there's loads of different endings, it seems. This is who's still alive. Major's dead, because we couldn't save Major. Snowball, we've not met everyone. Uh, always mourn fallen comrades. We did it We did it twice, for good measure. Um, humans... Oh, more humans, because the neighbours, I guess, will appear at some point. Okay, okay, so we've got... Ooh, okay. This is becoming a, a sort of bit more... Oh, so we can leave, so that's why it's... Oh, we did that, we ate the book already. Let's kick over the beer. Um, birds is like a return to monarchy. So, uh, I do have to say that whilst I was... Um, just quickly looking for clips whilst I was editing my uh, Orwell Peterson video, uh, I found that there was a there was a version of um, Animal Farm that was for what's it called? What's the um, like cheesy American TV program uh, TV channel where they make all the really soppy films? Um, And they make Christmas, and they make cards. Oh, here it is, here it is. So there's a 1999 film, um, version of Animal Farm, uh, by Hallmark Entertainment, which, uh, the poster is really low, right, so it's got Kelsey Grammer in it, it's got Pete Postlethwaite, um, you know, proper, Peter Ustinov is a very sort of famous British theatre actor, Peter, uh, Patrick Stewart, um, uh, and the poster could be for anything. This could be for Babe Pig in the City. Uh, but in the Wikipedia summary, uh, where is it? So the Wikipedia, uh, Hallmark, sorry, Quantum Fire saying Hallmark. <laughs> um, uh, oh, we might chat about Pregu at the moment. They've had a, a wild week of fun tweets. Uh, well, of all, all fun, the fun tweets. Um, so it ends at the end. Uh, sometime later, a motor car arrived with a benevolent farmer, his wife and children, the new owners of Manor, of Manor Farm, um, although the whereabouts of Jones and his wife are unknown. Jessie remarks she will not let this family make the same mistakes if, <laughs> on the neglect of Jones or the abuse of Napoleon and uh, is aware the small remnant of animals 
will now have to work alongside their new human masters to restore animal farms that will finally be free at last. Um, uh, Gina, <laughs> Gina W saying, my aunt rented this from the library for us when we were kids because she didn't look beyond the talking animal premise. But, I mean, they've given it a happy ending. They've, they were like, they were like, oh, this is the, seems a bit of a downer, this animal farm book. Um, let us, let us give it a, a fun sort of upswing at the end. Um, uh, so yeah, so there is a film edition which does have a happy ending. Uh, so my ours with a bit of luck. Okay, Mr. Jones was always meaner after a drink. Let him drink somewhere else. Okay, I do want to consume the book because I want, so because I want Snowball to find the books, I think. Because we want, we want Snowball. So should we not click everything, do you think? Do you think Molly would like these? Most likely she'd look like a fool. Benjamin's still around. Uh, no animals should wear human clothing. Okay, let's check out sleep. This looks softer than hay. Keep away from it. No animal. No animal sleep in bed. Okay, uh, Napoleon is keeping uh, is keeping to the rules of old major for now. Okay, let's exit. So I guess we can probably come back to that book. Well, um, the gaming den saying in the chat that capitalism just needs a responsible owner after all. But, like, Mr. Jones is like the Tsar, right? So, so I guess it's like a benevolent monarchy is the the hope that the Hallmark that he gives us. Maybe at some point. Maybe I should make that like a Patreon goal. It's just like a fun, just taking the mech out of uh, Animal Farm. Maybe just do Animal Farm Media, like both doing the, the the expanded Animal Farm universe of um, both Hallmark and uh, and whatever ending we manage to get from this game. Um, Max Gray saying, "Wait, what is this game? This game is Animal Farm, the video game, Max, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> which for some reason exists." Okay, not a single human being remains on the farm. Manor Farm is now ours. Perfect. Uh, Sienna Mob saying, is this like the home menu? Yeah, it seems like we come back to this quite often. Animal <laughs> Philippine Lumiere saying, Animal Farm Cinematic Universe. Um, Tamworth Pig. Robert Peel was P MP for Tamworth. Uh, yeah. Okay, well... Uh, can you? I don't really know what the rules I was streaming were like. Whether they'll take stuff down. Can I just watch a whole film? I presume not. Because if that was an option, I would like to just watch um, the Hallmark version of Animal Farm. Uh, there is a great deal to do now that Jones is gone. We will easily do better than he did. Yes, we will, Snowball. Um, we are gonna. Okay. Okay. So we can go to our handbook and we can see. I mean, it's not gonna. So are these chapters of the book? No, because there's not this many chapters of the book. Okay, completionist. Every animal farm has seen every possible outcome. Oh, so these are like achievements rather than different outcomes. Okay. Animal farm maintains its original laws. That's what we want. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Max Gray saying, this is great, uh, perfect, I've been arguing with a Zionist in my PhD program who wants to leave our union over it sponsoring a Palestine rally, I need this in my life, I mean, this is very much, all the horrific things happening in the world at the moment, uh, I feel like playing Animal Farm the video game, which, which from aesthetic I think might be for children, uh, is nice and is nice and chill. Empty. So I think like that this is some kind of like food store, and that then because it says like if you put the mouse over here, it says like no windmill, no defense, no windmill. Um. Complain. Worry. Complain or worry is all we can do. I'm gonna worry. What's her name again? I mean, we'll find out, won't we? Clover. That's it. The cows have not been milked since yesterday. Oh yeah, that. Oh yes, because this is one of the first time that um 
Uh, Max saying actually it's over a charm, which I agree with her criticism of, but uh, she way overstates harm in a way. Yeah, yeah, it's it is difficult in the one thing the UK loves as much as not liking Palestine is anti-Semitism. So um, uh, I. A lot of a lot of the time where I'm just deleting comments uh, on my videos is just like really old school anti-Semitism as well, um, which doesn't doesn't help. Okay, uh, okay, I'm done. That's okay. You can you can this can be a good this can be part of your your healing process. Um, uh, okay, Quantum Fire wants us to form a milk cooperative. I mean, we can look in the book and see if it's see if that's an achievement. Um, uh, Tejin Su, I hope I've pronounced that right, uh, saying just by watching the stream and reading the chat, I got a more interesting and nuanced take on Animal Farm than I ever did in ninth grade in American high school. Thanks, Tom and everyone. I'd love to know what Animal Farm is taught like in an American high school. Like, I, I suppose you can explain it, but you to like, yeah, watch a class in action. In action. Um, so Animal Farm. The animation was the first ever British animation, uh, and it was sponsored by the FBI or the CIA, I want to say. Um, uh, I don't think they knew. I don't think they knew, the people making it knew that it was sponsored by... Um, it was the CIA. It was commissioned by the CIA, um, which, I mean, what a what a... What a turn up. Okay. So the cows aren't in good health and Clover is worried about this. As for milking, a pig can manage as well as a farmer. I struggle to believe that. I feel like... Probably quite quite painful, not going to lie. What is going to happen to all that milk? Jones used sometimes, used sometimes to mix some of it in our mash. Okay. Okay. Do we get options again? So cows can hope. And there's like a... I don't know what that green arrow going upwards is. Distract promise. Promise? Do you think we can over promise if we're if we're snowball? I don't want to put snowball. I'm gonna promise. I'm gonna promise. Uh, oh, Max saying you never had to read Animal Farm. I. See anything in America and see anything did in the UK. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I ever had to. I don't know if it was ever. Um, I do, yeah, I don't know if I ever did like a lesson or something where I had to look at it. But... Okay. Snowball saying we will plan an equitable way of distributing all resources. Come on, Snowball. Uh, it will be very different from the way things were run under Jones. Let's make it a point of honour to get the hay in faster than Jones and his men. Yes, Snowball. Food we gather will feed us throughout the year. And in the autumn, we'll need enough in the storehouse for planting. What? No, Napoleon. Don't you dare. Okay. Oh, okay. So now we get different options where sometimes the food goes up. So we can click work and the food goes up. We can cooperate. Oh, it's going to give us really simplistic choices, isn't it? Where I don't understand. Okay, All, any animal strong enough may volunteer until Napoleon calls a halt to the work. I don't know what option we're being given here. Um, Boxer gets a down arrow if I work him. So I think I don't want to... So I'm going to ask Clover to do it instead. Feminism. Uh, okay, Clover, here let me. Boxer and I always used to do these together. With Clover's hard work, there is more hay in the store. Okay. Oh, so... Okay, so Napoleon still wants us to stop. The hens are going to make some more food, I think. 
if smaller animals can work together, we can make sure no straws of hay are left behind. The hay's the hens bring their share to the hay store. They can't do as much as a larger animal would, but they're useful when needed. Oh, he's still... So both these horses seem to go down if they... But Benjamin seems to be able to do it without having a down arrow. Benjamin grumbles while he helps. But he does bring in as much hay as anyone else's size. So I'm not going to do it with Boxer or with whoever this is. Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird structure for a visual novel. Um, you have to pick one that maybe correlates to Permanent Revolution. Um, it is a sort of odd. I don't know how it's going to pan out. I think I'm going to halt now. It's kind of hard to work out what the options are that you're being given, I think. But maybe that's for the best. Maybe it would be weird if it kept laying it out too clearly. Um, as much cooperation as possible, maybe. Okay, that will do, Napoleon says. We have enough to bring in the hay. The animals work hard all day and return for their supper. The next day, they gather in the barn to plan how the farm will be run. Okay, I think we're going into the barn. Together, they named the seven laws okay, of Okay, so we're at year one still. Okay, here's our laws. The first law says, whatever goes on two legs is an enemy. Okay. Boo. Wait, what? Question. I can boo question. Or I can... No? No? They're not options? It's sort of hard to work out what's an option sometimes. Um, boo. Should I, is boo... I don't know whether boo is booing the rule or booing the... <laughs> Quantum Fire just saying, just kill the pigs now before things get bad. No, we want... We want Snowball. We don't want Napoleon. Okay, boo was... Um, Booing the humans rather than the law, the rule itself. The second law says whatever goes on four legs or has wings is a friend. Dog says what about rats? We have four legs. Oh, we've met rats. That's a new character. But you're always needing to be chased off. Old Major considered rats to be comrades. Of course, Old Major did. Everyone, everyone was on board with uh, Old Major. He invited them to the meetings. We will vote. Should the rats be allowed to stay? Do I just get to decide what the vote outcome of the vote is, presumably? Yes. 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 Both. What? No. Let's have the rats. We're not. The rats are creatures as well. Oh, Sienna's saying, could we... A Foxwood and Pinchfield, are they the... Um, farmers either side that they play off against each other? Are we going to try and... Maybe we could expand... If we could, if we can spread our um, animal revolution, if we can spread animalism to the rest of the world... Okay, the rats are creatures as well. Let them stay, says Boxer. I think we've sort of ended up with Boxer in charge. Squealer begins painting the new laws on the wall of the barn. These laws come to us from Old Major and from our own difficult experience. Commit them to memory. Ah. Uh, sheep, are you troubled? There are too many to remember. Make an effort. Maybe slow burning go up. They get good at them, I think, don't they? They it's the sheep that become like the sort of propaganda almost. Whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy. Whatever goes upon four legs or has wings is a friend. No animal shall wear clothes. No animal shall sleep in a bed. No animal shall drink alcohol. No animal shall kill any other animal. All animals are equal. 
Um, oh, Sienna saying, yeah, they're the neighbouring farms. Um, what are the rules of sort of allusion to? to? I don't want to question. I think they're okay rules. Um, I think this is, it looks like if this says leave, this might be another place we can come back to and sort of check. Yeah, we're going to spread the revolution between all the farms. That's, that's okay, we've now got three goals. We've got Snowball becomes leader. Um, we've got Boxer stays alive. And we've got that we spread the revolution to other farms. Old Major Skull will watch over us. And at the moment, he'd wish us to go back to work. Sheep saying we still can't remember the laws. Here is a simpler version. Four legs good, two legs bad. Four legs good, two legs bad. I don't know what the rules are meant. Like, cause, like I know that they're sort of just like the founding principles of um, animalism or socialism, but um, it's not like the Communist Manifesto has seven rules to it, does it? Is there some? Was there something? Sian, you seem to be an expert in the Russian Revolution. Is there some kind of? Um, uh, I don't know. Was there some kind of founding rules? Okay, exactly. Understand that, and you understand the laws. Four legs, good. Practice in your own field. But year two, no. This is the beginning of animalism on the farm. Well, I'd say Old Major did a good job of uh, kicking it off, but... Every animal is committed to the principles set down by Old Major. If anyone forgets, the chanting of the sheep will remind them. Yeah, I think, I think maybe we've got to try and... Well, I think an option is probably to try and keep all the rules. Get a pig in space, it will help with propaganda. Okay. Okay, fourth plan is we get a pig in space. Um, that will be, if that is an option, uh, I'll be very happy to, to do that. Okay, if anyone forgets the chanting of the sheep will remind them. Okay, so he can grumble. Okay, so I think, no, or oh, what does that do? Direct. Bask. So is it like the the laws go down? I don't understand. Lowest animalism. Oh, so how much animalism do you keep then? I it seems like is a sort of thing. I'm confused. I don't really understand the game. Chant. Oh, and who's that? That's okay. Let's keep our animalism high. So, uh, in my high school, this exact scene with the rules of animalism was interpreted as restricting the animal's individualism and a sure sign that socialism equals authoritarianism. Um, I mean, it's just don't do the, the things that were the sort of sources of oppression, right, isn't it? So, um, Also, the whole point is that they don't need to sleep in a bed in the same way that we sort of don't need billionaires, right? Um... A pig does not need to sleep in bed. Okay, four legs, good. The Republic of Animals cannot be far away. Sometime later, the animals discover what is happening to the milk. What is happening to the milk? You didn't give me an option to decide what it was happening. Mixed into the pig's feed. Dang it. All animals are supposed to be equal. I feel like it is going to force our hand at times, isn't it? Why is our milk going to the pigs alone? Comrades, this is for the good of everyone. The pigs' work is brain work. They need their strength to help us all. Okay. Praise. Agree. Doubt. Enforce. Doubt. Why would it... <clears> hmm... <throat> I'm frustrated with the options it's giving me. I want nuanced. I want nuanced political discussion. Um, because it doesn't really give you a difference between the two. Uh, the two pigs really. Like you can support the pigs or 
not support the pigs in many way. Which would seem to be like a very basic misunderstanding of the book. Like that that's the core thing, right? I'm going to praise it because I want high animalism. But I think the makers of this game's interpretation of animalism is very different to mine, I think. Comrade Napoleon knows what is best. Morning wakes up the cows. What shall I do today? Okay, we've got a good amount of food. We've got medium animalism, which I think is just authoritarianism in the words of this game. So Squealer can sing and our animalism goes up. Okay, I think Napoleon's gonna study. We give milk to the hens. Okay, Napoleon's gonna study. Your organization and studies are in a disgraceful state. Oh, sorry, the cows are gonna study from Snowball. Ah. No one ever asked such things of us before. And it is hard to think when we have not had enough to eat. The days are long now. The days are growing longer. Okay. The hens wake, well and happy in their hutch. I'm going to just move this over here so I can see my chat on this window as well. Um... Uh, Quantum Fire saying it's a caricature of communism, so it won't be nuanced. I don't know. I was just, I was sort of hoping that they'd have maybe read the book. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like and sort of like taken something away from it, but I don't know. Sienna Sienna saying that I guess maybe the rules loosely lay out the intention of the Russian Revolution and what they were seeking to escape. Yeah, I think there's an extent to which it is just a vague, um, a sort of vague outlining of the initial things. Uh. Yeah, the pigs are sort of the revolutionary thinkers. But I don't know. I see, like, the the clear dispute at the heart of the book is that the snowball gets done over and that... But I, I'm not sure if we're going to have that as an option. Okay, the hens wake happy in their hutch. You can rest and the hens get healthier. Squealer can sing and animalism goes up. I don't understand. Oh, so we're deciding what the hens are going to do. But their health goes down or something? Something of the hens goes down if they study. Eggs to sell. Okay, we're going to study again. You could work on write your writing. We don't care to scratch letters in the dirt. Why don't they want to? Surely... Uh, they could want to learn. That is a thing that they could want. But we will if we must. Summer progresses. And the fields darken to gold. Uh, some progresses and the fields darken to gold. Is that good? Oh, right, as in, like, become the, the hay. The sun rises over the summer fields. Boxer, what shall I do today? Why do they lose health or something if they study? Praise? Oh, Max saying that there's something I want to share from a friend, a flyer for how people can help with any tech workers in the chat. Let us know what um what the particular thing is to help with. Um, feed? I'm going to feed. I think keeping Boxer alive is going to be an option. But Napoleon, I don't think, I don't think Snowball was even considered a good thing. Okay. There'll be time enough in the year to gather more food. But if anything happens to you, the farm will be in a difficult place. The sheep wake in the morning. <laughs> they can do anything. So it's just, it's just sort of like a few different organize. Chant, not animalism goes up. Patrol, our food goes down. Let's chant. Let's keep our animalism high. Sorry, it's fine. Gaza, that's totally okay. Uh, if there is a... Uh, if you have a suggestion for a way people can do something useful, then um, do, do pop it in the chat somehow. Uh, sheep are doing four legs good, two legs bad. 
Why do you never do one of map wings? We have birds now. I don't think the birds were anim were around before. Can you hear that? Someone is singing Beast of England. We taught the animals in the neighbouring farms. Okay, we seem to be spreading our our rebelliousness. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. This game is. Not um, super exhilarating, is it? Propagandize, warn, warn them of what? It's never sort of super clear what the options are. Like I know it doesn't. I I don't exactly want a. You know, to be told exactly what's going to happen when I click things, but it often feels like I've literally no idea. We're going to propagandize. Uh, so in the chat, Max is saying, attention tech workers, well, this is the text from the tweet. Uh, attention tech workers, join us Friday, May 21st, uh, 12, I'm guessing that's like noon uh, Eastern time. Uh, the launch event for at Demilitarize U2P to build tech worker power against Israeli apartheid. Um, so I found out that, I'm, I think, the university that I... I suppose still I'm marking some dissertations at the moment. Um, so I suppose I still work at. Uh, and where I did my PhD does something like make, I don't know, does some sort of research which ends up, um, which in some, which goes, I don't know, in some way ends up over there. Um, uh, but there was that great, that the great news of the uh, dock workers in Italy who, um, refused to load ships which contained arms that were going to uh, go into the IDF uh, maybe a few days ago. There was also... Let's pause the game for two seconds, actually. We can do some good news stories. Um, we can pause the game and do some... This will much around for a second. Um... Pause the game. And we'll pause the game and do some... Let's have time for a couple of good news stories um, whilst a lot of uh, horrific things happening in the world. Um, so I think uh, in Italy, there were dock workers who... Uh, here we go in the independent. Uh, refused to uh, load... Yeah, load a ship. I think it was a, a bigger sort of container ship, but one of the things that it contained was a shipment of arms uh, to go to Israel. Uh, workers will not be accomplices to the strikes on Gaza, says Union. Uh, so in Tuscany, in Livorno, um, because they discovered it was going to the Israeli port of Ashdod, um, which is the kind of thing that I don't think you've sort of seen unions doing so much of in very, very recent years. I mean, definitely not in the UK, where, um, like, which used to be a much bigger thing of, uh, yeah, a union going, actually, we've got a slightly broader lens of things. There was also um, uh, Max Gray saying in the chat that, uh, yeah, I love seeing that. It's like the West Coast dock workers strike during South African apartheid. Yeah, um, yeah, there was several places that um, would uh, would do that. Um, that that would do sort of get involved in various forms of sort of BDS and just sort of refuse to work on stuff that um, you know involved going to South Africa. Um, there was also. Uh, what's it called? Fire Brigade Union? I, so, I, so there was a protest where um, this was another another you know positive story uh, amid a lot of the horrific stuff that um, some pro-Palestine protesters occupied a drone factory in Leicester, which is in the UK. Um, where they were, you know, creating UAVs that were um, 
uh, well, so it's the protesters alleged to have been used in the conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. Um, and so they chained the gates. And they went on the yeah, they went on the roof. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and so as part of this, as quite what, what often happens is in the UK at least is that the the fire brigade were called out to. Um, I don't know whether it was to like break the chains to get people in or whether it was to get people off the roof because, you know, they have that equipment and the police don't uh, in the UK at least. Um, but where is it? So, but then the local FBU, which is the Fire Brigade Union, which is, oh, here we go, uh, which is relatively, um, you, know, sort of, you know, relatively left wing, I guess, in the UK and, and definitely very, very well organized in the UK um sort of interceded uh and um well i mean here's the statement is that the fire brigade union were made aware that the protesters were representing the palestinian solidarity group palestine Ac- Palest- palestine action um union officials immediately reminded senior managers that as firefighters we are and remain a proud humanitarian service and our role does not involve law enforcement um, once the safety of those involved had been confirmed fire brigade union members withdrew from the incident uh, the Fire Brigade Union stands in support of Palestinian solidarity and the right to protest. Um, so, yeah, so, so uh, you know, they used that, um, uh, uh, the sort of power of being in a union to um, intercede in some way in, in, a, in a bigger thing and to, which is really, which is really powerful. I'm trying to think what the other thing was that I saw where it was, you know, because, because, it's easy. Well, I mean, it's right in many ways to focus on the the horrific the the horrific things and the um, you know the numbers of deaths, etc. Um, but it's also nice occasionally to see um, the ways in which people are uh, doing whatever they can. Um, you know, it's hard to uh, have any meaningful impact on on some of this on some of this stuff when it's happening so far away in the world um in fact it's worth taking a look at the uh the bds national committee um would it be here uh sort of list so what they've sort of talked about is that um there is i uh i can't think where the thing was on their thing so the uh boycott divestment and uh sanctions movement is one that sort of campaigns for uh people to boycott um stuff that is made in the occupied territories uh in palestine um for sort of investors and businesses and such to divest so to not be investing in companies or other stuff that is um you know, happening illegal, you know, businesses that are based or, um, you know, doing any of their work in the occupied uh, territories, um, which, you know, is illegal. Um, even before you take into account the horrific practices that it is sort of encouraging. Um, and, you know, for governments to impose uh, sanctions. Uh, but one thing they've said for like, normal people i guess like the mise news of this world um is that sometimes when sort of lists go round um they're like really really massive like and it's like here's a list of all sorts of so it's, it's often either you know stuff that is grown like uh like dates i think can sometimes be grown in the occupied uh territories and uh some other stuff uh but also companies that so like HP, for example, who make computers, they um, make the fingerprinting technology which uh, allows uh, the Israeli government to keep a sort of two-tiered system and to keep track of uh, people who live uh, in Palestine. Um, well, and sort of Palestinian Arabs, I guess. Um, but so so because that can often involve a huge number of people because lots of people are in lots of companies sorry are in some way uh involved and that can oh here's the picture yeah so that can lead to here's their sort of simplified picture version is that if everyone accidentally well if everyone boycotts three different things you sort of don't get a 
thing. Whereas if you target on a small f uh, number of companies, you can sort of have a slightly bigger uh, impact. So they've got a list if you go on their website, which is bdsmovement.net, um, where they suggest like a, a slightly shorter list of things which you could target for not, um, you know, for boycotting and not purchasing. Uh, and that that can have a more meaningful impact. Um, so it's a lot of fruits and vegetables and stuff. Um, uh, AXA, which I don't actually know what they do. I feel like that's one of those companies that you know the logo of, but they come up, uh, but they but don't necessarily. Oh, insurance. Okay, insurance. Uh, HP, Puma. Soda Stream, that's long been one, I think, that's been a target of boycott stuff. Um, and uh, Pillsbury, which I don't think that, I don't think necessarily exists in the UK, but is uh, the Doughboy existing? Is it like Ghostbusters? I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, that's a small thing you can do, I guess. And also, you know, donating money to. Um, uh, sort of aid organizations um it is very very sad horrific times um uh it seemed like the u s was maybe shifting towards doing something or at least asking for a ceasefire whatever that actually whatever impact that has i'm not sure Okay, let's, we'll, I think as Max saying earlier, let's sort of break up our catastrophizing about the state of the world. I'm aware that is a massively privileged thing to do, but uh, that's the, what's Quantum Fire saying? That's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Is that different? The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man is different to the Pillsbury Doughboy. They're so complicated. Why everything in America seems to have a mascot. Um, there's too many of them. It's too confusing. Uh, okay. Wait, what did Snowball do again? I can't remember. So, Snowball, so we're planning a campaign. Bring all the nearby farms to animalism. Okay, this is something we wanted to do, right? This was one of our goals. Yes. The neighbouring farmers often talk about the goings on at Animal Farm. Okay. In the pub talk in such loud voices that the birds can hear them outside. Hmm. It's your own fault. Oh, here's Pilkington. It's your own fault you kept such a disorderly farm. Yeah, watch your own animals and see what they're doing. Okay, so they try and invade, I think, don't they, in the book? So I'm guessing that might happen again here. Watch when they start gathering in the barn. And they start singing music. Then tell me it was my fault. Animals don't sing, excepting the birds. You're a drunk, Jones. There is a spirit of liberty on the farm. Good, good. I'm glad that there is a, a spirit of liberty. Rations and working times are not closely observed. Food is wasted. But the animals are cheerful. The days of Jones are truly over. Animal Farm borders two other farms. One is called Foxwood, a large, neglected, old-fashioned farm. Its owner, Mr. Pilkington, is an easy-going gentleman farmer. The other farm, called Pinchfield, is smaller and better kept. Its owner is Mr. Frederick, a tough, shrewd man. Frederick is always involved in a lawsuit with someone. Okay, this feels like a new stage of the game. We ought to divide Animal Farm between ourselves. I've drawn a plan for dividing it between mm. us. You've given yourself more than half of the fields. I've left you the woodland. Your own ha farm is half trees. So are they going to try and attack us? In all the nearby farms, word spreads about the state of affairs in Animal Farm. I thought we were spreading the word of animalism. Mr. Jones's neighbours make fun of him for losing his farm to his own animals. 
It was never good. <laughs> mean to say that Farmer Pilkington looks like a bit of a dweeb? I think I'm allowed to take the Mega Cartoons, actually, aren't I? Or a super one. He's outdone himself this time. I tell you, though, it's had a bad effect on the neighborhood. Okay, those are the things they're saying about us in town. Oh, okay, so the birds have sort of been spying for us, I think. I think that's what was sort of happening there. Um, okay, those things they're saying is about in town. Oh, okay, we can do more things now, I think. Um, we have a modest supply of food. High animalism. Boast makes propagandize. Why do we get less food if we propagandize? Preen doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, but we get a green arrow going up on Snowball. And we want... <laughs> Invade Czechoslovakia farm. Oh, let's propagandize. Surely we can get more food at some point. Like winter veg? Winter veg is a thing. Can they not grow winter veg? Snowball, we are winning. Soon other farms will be taken over by the animals as well. That's what we would like. They will be as happy as we are. I will have the birds redouble their efforts. The hens wake, well and happy in their hutch. Okay. So what can we do? So we can squeal up, so we can sing, and our animalism goes up. We can study and the hens, like, lose health or something? I'm not sure. We can eggs to sell means animalism goes down, but food goes up. Or we can just rest. And I guess sort of nothing happens. Oh, or we work and get more food. Let's get more food. Do you think it's just like this for the rest of the game? We're not large or strong. But we can do small tasks. You're a credit to Animal Farm, comrades. The apples are now ripening, and there are windfalls in the orchard. The animals have assumed that these will be shared out equally. Who was it? I can't imagine they're still here. That it was their foot. This was their first experience of Animal Farm. Um, I feel like this doesn't. Without being mean to the people that obviously spent many hours making this game, I don't. I don't quite think it does it justice, I'm afraid. Um, Llewellyn, no pudding, Griffiths. Um, Quantum Fire saying we can build a wall Berlin style. Uh, no, I want to win over the other farms. That's my that's my goal. I want to spread animalism. Okay, Squealer singing a new order. All the windfall, all the windfalls, apples, um, are to be brought to the harness room for the pigs. Why are the apples not shared? Comrades, many pigs actually dislike milk and apples. See, I don't understand. Like, I don't know, there's things that's clearly not giving us um, choices in, which are sort of guiding. Uh, yeah, we're going to go borderless, right? We're going to spread animalism. We eat them only to preserve our health. We pigs are brain workers. Day and night, we are watching over your welfare. If we fail in our duty, Jones will come back. Do you want that? So, doubt means everything's sort of on top of each other. So, animalism goes down, I think, if we doubt. We don't want Jones to come back. Then Squealer's sort of health, I think, goes up. I want Boxer to be alive, so I'm going to say no. Certainly not. Jones must never return. And stir in the hen house. Oh, is it just going to give me the options again? Eggs to sell means we get more food. I'm not. I'm not giving in to Napoleon's demands. I don't know if the hens are going to like die or something. Are they just going to get too clever that they just? You should learn to scratch your letters in the dirt, at least. We never needed that before. I'm sure we've had this conversation already. It'll be beneficial now. Summer becomes autumn. Summer's become autumn, apparently. Uh, 
Surveil. Reassure. No, like the whole point of the book is that Snowball is the good one. <laughs> and it really does not give you that option. <laughs> like, it's like, no, actually, bad as well. Surveillance. We watch everything that happens on the farm and in Willingdon. Let every animal be in the field doing her part. Now is the time of year when the neighboring farmers Snowball is a feminist, apparently. Uh, now is the time of year when the neighboring farmers cut the hedges. Well, that's good, because all the human farmers do their parts. Julia Durham saying, this is the, Tom, this is the cutest shit ever. Do you mean the, the, the game? Because it, it has nice animations. Um, it's not super exhilarating, I'm not going to lie. It's, I've, I've played more exciting video games in my life. All the human farmers do their parts. Animal Farm should do its share. Oh, go away, Pilkington, you creep. They won't do it. Do you think the pigs carry clippers? If the pigs want to run a farm, they better do the whole job. Oh, man. What do we have to do? She she sh 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 the sh shear the sheep. Ignore. Cut. Let grow. I don't know what that means. That picture going up over there. With the little green arrow. Like it really explains none of the game to you. Sienna saying, have I seen people online celebrating Trotsky's death at the moment? I can't say I have. They've sort of a bit li late with that one, aren't they? We're going to cut it. We're going with... Anything the humans do, a pig can arrange. It will be no more difficult than shearing a sheep. It will certainly be better for our good name in Willingdon. The harvest should have been brought in long ago. It is only now that the animals can begin the work. Why couldn't we? Can you think of me the option to start it earlier? Who will work the harvest? Comrades! Uh, so I don't want... Oh, so whoever does it is going to have their health go down, apart from the hens, apparently. Cooperate. But cooperating, that wouldn't be animalism going down, would it? Ah! Crops? Yeah, I think they might be the crops just getting taller. Molly saying, if I must. Jones never made me do so much work. I mean, we've never clicked on you, Molly, so you've not done anything all year. You've been chilling. Who will work the harvest? Comrades? Oh, see, so we can now, like, assist. Well, the hens never seem to... I think it maybe was a horse plow. Uh, we're small, but there are a lot of us. We can bring in the grain that would otherwise be left out in the field. I think that does happen in the book, actually. Uh, lay in plenty of potatoes and apples. Oh, so we get to decide who's going to go, and therefore... The thing is, we've got loads of food now. So I'm going to halt. I'm going to go with Squeeder and halt. Because Boxer will stay alive if it's the last thing I do. That will do. There are enough of us to work on the harvest now. It rains heavily for several days. No work can be done. Let's shelter under the eaves in Willingdon. It will be drier there. Most of this time, Mr. Jones has spent in the Ran <laughs> random the thought from the birds there. Hey, so Miss Jones has been getting He's pushed. Anyone who would listen, the monstrous injustice he suffered. <laughs> so this is in the book. This is all. Hmm. Very awkward business. That's Mr. Pil that's Pilkington's voice. Very awkward business. Are they going to attack? The weather turns bitter. Okay. The snow covers the farm. Hey. 
Comrades, we may need to make a few sacrifices for the good of all. I might leave Animal Farm there for a second. We might come back to it in a moment, but we might leave it there for the... For the day. Let's have a look at... So there is a ceasefire, is there? Sienna's saying in the chat. Israel-Gaza. Israel agrees ceasefire in conflict with Gaza militants. Uh, here is the full statement from the Israeli Security Cabinet confirming the ceasefire decision. The Security Cab Cabinet convened tonight. The Political Security Cabinet unanimously agreed that the recommendation of all security officials, the Chief of Staff, the Head of the Shin Bet, Internal Security Agency, the Head of Mossad, Foreign Intelligence, and the Head of the National Security Council to accept the Egyptian initiative for a bilateral, unconditional ceasefire, which will take effect at a later date. The Chief of Staff, the Military Echelon and the head of the GSS reviewed before the ministers Israel's great achievements. Wow. The chief of staff, the military echelon, and the head of the GSS reviewed before the ministers Israel's great achievements in the campaign. It doesn't really make sense grammatically. Some of which were unprecedented. The political echelon emphasizes that the reality on the ground will determine the continuation of the campaign. So at 8.44, oh, so about 15 minutes ago, they confirmed, Israel confirmed the ceasefire, but not its timing. Oh, the Guardian notification's just come through. Um, it's killed 232 in Gaza and 12 in Israel, the, con the fighting over the last few days. Um... Three hours away for us now. Israel is still bombing lots at the moment. Um, blimey. Why is Gaza blurry on, re on Google Maps? Yeah, this is in this this stuff like this interests me about like how um can we talk about the YouTubers? I know this, I know uh hello Ingsert's name. Yes, Tom Nicholas has a live channel. I've had it for a little while, I've not really used it a huge amount, but um I decided to I would start doing it again. Uh probably every week on a Thursday about this time. Um I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna leave Animal Farm, the video game, there for this week. We might play a little bit more next week uh, and see how far we get. Uh, if it still is enjoyable, we will continue our goals of making Snowball the uh, leader of uh, Animal Farm, uh, keeping Boxer alive, spreading animalism to every other farm in uh, England and Ireland, and also. Uh, what was the what was the last thing? Sending a sheep into space. Whose idea was that? But we're going to try and do that. Um, but yeah, we will come back to this game next week because I think there's still some playability in it, even though it's not the most fun thing. Um, but let's leave that there for now. We'll do a little bit longer though, maybe chat um about some stuff. Uh, uh, who's saying hello? We've got a couple of people saying hello actually. Bloody rain saying, hey, dropped by here. Last one of these. How are you doing? I'm all right. We've had a a mixed bag of chatting about um, stuff happening in Gaza and then having a chat about um, then like skipping over and playing stupid, uh, a stupid animal farm game uh, and stuff like that uh, and chatting about more silly stuff. Can I chat about a silly thing? Could I chat about a silly thing uh, that's happened recently that sort of I got mildly interested in 
uh, whilst it was happening. Um, I know there is more important things going on in the world, but uh, oh, that was Quantum's idea sending a sending a something into a sheep into space. Okay, we'll we'll try and do that. I I have a fun at Yuri the sheep. I have a feeling that's not going to be an option. Um, but something I got mildly interested in whilst uh, over the past few weeks is I don't know if everyone's aware, but it has been the London mayoral thingy, my Bob, uh, the London mayoral election. Uh, and what's been, uh, and so that's been going on for a few weeks. It's been a bit different this time round because um, it's been COVID, obviously. So the elections have happened slightly differently. I think it was meant to happen last year. No, no, I'm not sure. But anyway, the London mayoral elections have been uh, happening. And one thing that has... Uh, everyone's saying, yes, cheer us up. Good, good, good. So one thing that has been interesting me about the London mayoral elections is that two YouTubers this time round ran for uh, the London mayorship. Uh, two uh, British YouTubers, obviously. Love, well, sort of three, okay? So... Um, we'll come back to the main ones and the main the one that I've sort of actually watched the videos of. But um, I mean, the one that people might have seen more of previously is this guy who is called uh, Brian, Brian Rose. Is that it? It's called Brian Rose, who is absolutely amazing. We're not going to talk about him for too long because he's um, just a bit nuts uh, and, and the sort of joke gets old. This man who looks like a sort of villain from something. Uh a mate like just an amazing an amazing guy. Um Okay, someone's saying NDL, right? So the other person, so one of the other people was this Nico uh Omelana, whose thing seems to be, if I go to YouTube, like breaking into stuff. I've seen like one or two of his videos, but I um Hadn't really seen anything before the mayor chip, and I've not seen his um, any of his mayor stuff. Uh, but he did a video, for example, where he broke into the Brits, I think. Oh, the Baftas was that it? I think he snuck the into the Baftas. I think might be the one that screaming your name, I've fame, watched, and he money, went to the mansions and the red carpet. Cars. This is the life I have achieved from YouTube. And we went inside yeah, and they the managed Royal to like sneak Albert in back. So this guy sort of does pranks. That's his thing. Um, I mean, Brian. So Brian Rose is a whole. There's there's so much to dig into here. He's like a sort of podcaster. Um, but so so Sienna's saying in the chat wasn't Lawrence Fox involved. So I think that's the starting point for the person that I want to talk about. Is that so? There is a chap in the UK called Lawrence Fox. Um. Oh, sorry. Who. Let's start from so his normal thing before he went a bit nut bit nuts um was that he was like on he was a sort of Sunday TV um kind of actor so he was in Lewis which is a spin-off of uh, a program called Inspector Morse um a, like a fine actor like really nothing special but Chrome every time There you sir. go he's not this guy the other guy could ably yeah, just exist in a Sunday I afternoon drama and wouldn't be so bad that you'd turn it off. Um, would just be sort of okay, and that's all that is demanded of him in that task. Uh, he then, at some point, went on question time. At, well, he got divorced first. I think that's important. Uh, that's probably important to take into account. That he got divorced from Billy Piper, I want to say. Um, yeah, so in, in, in 2016, he got divorced from, uh, Billy Piper off of, uh, Doctor Who, and, um, then he went into question time, and at some point, Let's be really um, he went on a whole thing about, uh, I'm a straight white guy and I can't say anything anymore, um, you know, the sort of, like, standard... Uh, I actually want to make a name for myself as a bit of a right-wing grifter. So, I'm gonna do that. Oh, no, is that on this? Oh, I skipped on to the next video, sorry. Um, 
tolerant, lovely country uh, uh, in Europe. Let's Senator, celebrate our women. What worries boring. me about your comment is you are a white privileged male who has oh, no experience. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, can I just... I can't I, help what I am. I was born like this. It's an immutable so characteristic. You, so, so, it's a so this, like... 20 seconds on TV just then sparks a whole thing. Um, uh, he then decides that he's going to become a musician. So uh, so he becomes... Uh, so he releases a little bit of music um, and it's absolutely terrible. Like, I can't explain how awful this is. In fact, he hires someone to sing half of it for him and to constantly... Um, sort of do melodies with him because because he can't sing. Wait, sorry, let's go back for a little bit. They have put something in the water. They seek a cure for the conversation. They stole a march on your indecision. And the first to fall was laughter just to quell the unoffended. Well, you can't hear the audio. Your opinion. I mean, that's that's a good thing for you, I think. But I can't. Been turned out I've turned it up a little bit. It might be replaced by blinding fires that burn wild across the region. <laughs> Sorry, Llewellyn, <laughs> just saying. Just tuned in again. Oh Lord, Lawrence Fox. Um, so uh, the audio on the video doesn't work. Okay, I mean that has saved you all plenty of. Um, you can go and find it if you want. It's it's horrific. Um, and so he releases some music, which is all about... It's all like sort of right-wing process songs about how you can't make jokes anymore. Um, eventually, he... <laughs> so he's his main policy is winning Billy Piper back. Uh, it, is, it is strong, strong, strong divorced energy to the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, insert name saying, I have been subjected to the singing. Uh... So he does that, and that flops because the music's absolutely terrible. He then... Oh, the audio did come back on, did it? Um, sorry, I think I turned it down. He then decides he's going to run for London mayor. Well, I think he, he launched a political party first, which is called the Reclaim Party, I think, first. Uh, his main thing being sort of COVID denialism. Like, that's the whole thing. And lockdowns are bad, etc. Sort of just going for that sort of i don't know just trying to get attention just trying to get attention um so that's sort of the uh backstory to this guy is still amazing um to the guy that i wanted to talk about who was so there's this guy called max fosh and i i don't want to take the piss too much because this guy's like um 23 maybe is a is a child um oh sorry i've not got that uh and he is sort of the other YouTuber that uh, decided... I'm going to turn the music off, I'm afraid. Uh, sort of the other uh, YouTuber that decided to go for it. Um, the London Mayorship. And the whole thing is a little bit... Like, Nico Milana just has a lot more fans, so just got a lot more votes and was a lot more sort of successful with it. But, uh, so Max Fosh is an incredibly... You know, and I think admits to it in his stuff incredibly 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 posh guy that went to harrow um and that sort of his up. general vibe uh his previous things include going driving up to the bbc headquarters and parking a car outside with his cv with a sort of joke cv on it being like please give me a job but also is sort of serious in a way and um you know uh, there is something about the the thing that private school or public school gives people most i think is the confidence to just sort of go hello please give me my job now um sienna's saying he's apparently quite a nice guy i'm sure i'm sure he is and i think um but but yeah, very part yeah. Um, and I w I wonder if that sort of niceness might have been his downfall here, in that um, at some point he decided. Oh, they've got episode numbers. So this is good. At some point he decided he was going to also run for 
uh, for London mayor and that his goal was going to be to get more votes than Lawrence Fox. Um, because they both went to the same schools. They both went to Harrow, which is, I think, the most expensive school in England. I think it's more expen I think it's more expensive than Eton. Uh fourteen thousand two hundred pounds per term. Uh I have like when I did was doing my PhD, uh my stipend in the first year was fourteen thousand five hundred pounds a year. I think. I think I'm right in saying that. Um it was about fifteen thousand pounds anyway. Harrow costs fourteen thousand two hundred pounds per term, so that's you know, what's that times three? Uh so that's forty two thousand pounds a for a single year to send your child there. Um and uh so him and uh Lawrence Fox both went to and they do, they wear straw hats. They wear straw hats, see what I'm saying. Uh, Hayano Harrow School uniform a little bit like this so this is Harrow School um, and so he started off with this thing of like okay I'm going to run to be London Mayor in order to beat Lawrence Fox who also went to my school um, and I was sort of like sort of had my interest piqued by this um, the race was always going to be relatively safe for Sadiq Khan who's the uh, Labour uh, mayor of, of London, who was the mayor before, is the mayor afterwards. Um, so it sort of ov opened up an opportunity for, for a lot of, like, there was a lot of silly candidates as well as just a lot of tiny candidates. It costs 10 grand to run. So in the UK, you have to put down a deposit for uh, to, to run for any elected position. For the um, mayoral contest, it's ten thousand pounds and you have to get five percent of the vote to get that ten grand back uh so you know he paid the ten grand to run for it and sort of implicit in the first video at least was the notion that he was doing it for a reason right he wanted to beat lawrence fox and you know the implication there is that he wants to beat lawrence fox because lawrence fox is a big old racist and a covid denier and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, right he's building his brand around that kind of right-wing vote um you know in the end in london he did a sort of electoral pact with uh the reform party which used to be the brexit party which similarly tries to get that vote um but then as the videos went on he just sort of didn't add any context to it like he never explained who Lawrence Fox was for anyone who was watching it and, you know, wasn't aware of why he was doing it. Um, never sort of said why Lawrence Fox's policies or or Lawrence Fox's views about the world are bad and just sort of, it just sort of became this ha ha ha, bants, 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 I'm posh, he's posh, we both went to the same posh school and I'm going to try and beat him and it just became this really odd sort of politics less politics less thing, um, which I don't know. Felt like a. I mean, Sienna was saying in the chat that apparently he's quite a nice guy, and you know maybe that's the case that that sort of it became. You know, some it's a bit of a risk, isn't it, to want to 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 go. Okay, I'm gonna you know go after this guy for his politics, um, and yeah. So it felt like it was really weird to sort of watch happen as it happened like Lawrence Fox had his um like big policy launch well not policy launch he didn't really have any policies but apart from sort of being angry generally at the world but Lawrence Fox had his big campaign launch with a bus and he parked next to it and it said like don't believe the with his car with stickers on it and the car just said like don't trust everything you see or something and it was like, there's, I suppose there's a minor joke, right? But it's not really saying anything about the... It's not going, actually, you know, London is a really multicultural city and we should not... We should 
be happy that this guy is going to lose his deposit. So it was a really odd thing to watch unfold because there was something really sort of minorly exciting at the uh, beginning there that then just sort of disappeared very quickly to the point where it was just two guys from Harrow running against each other, which what British politics doesn't need more of is posh guys from posh schools just running against each other for elected office. Like, I'm sure there was enough of that already um, on the ballot paper before. That's Tom's uh, uh, soapbox thing about that. But he does seem like a okay guy. Uh, I think just being that posh probably means you don't have such perspective on, on the world and maybe how some of your actions might come across. Um, uh, Sienna's saying, I've been to four secondary schools. One was a private one on a full scholarship. I lasted 10 weeks. Uh, I did a uh, sort of acting thing one summer when I was a sort of young aspiring thespian um, and it was at a private, at a sort of pretty exclusive private school, and it was this um, sort of sort of summer thing where we made a show, and we got to go and work in this art center for the summer, and stay in the sort of accommodation because obviously the accommodation wasn't being used by the kids that um, for the for those weeks or whatever, uh, and it was always made very clear to us. Like we were all like about eight, 18, 19. You know, I think some people are probably getting on for 25. But it was always made really clear to us that like this was like a big privilege and that we were like being let in and allowed to do this thing in the summer. Um, like just made it really, really clear um, that we should be super thankful about the whole thing, um, which is weird vibes i want to make a video at some point about the ways in which you sort of feel class when you go to different places i think like when you go to that first posh restaurant and you're like oh um or when you yeah when you go and i don't know visit somewhere like a private school or you go going to university like that was um that was really i remember that being quite a I remember going going to university for the first time opened my eyes to how like I, I don't know there wasn't even super posh or rich people on my course looking back on it now but I definitely would go it opened my eyes to I realized you could be a lot more rich than I thought you could be previously cuz you just don't um don't don't see it um Bet he made money on YouTube ads for running for mayor. Uh, he did say in one of his things that he actually didn't make money from it, that he actually, um, that he lost money from doing it, which I think, which if he doesn't really do sponsored videos, and I would say that, I don't know. Some of the videos have got quite a lot of views, but I don't know whether they'd have got, 10 grand i don't think they'd have got 10 grand and then enough to live off for however many months he was doing it um uh it's hard like it's really hard to compare between youtubers but um but yeah so i don't know so i don't know um another video that i've wanted to make for some time yeah and Another video I've wanted to make for some time is one about the sort of weird class discourse that we've got at the moment. And I might still make this one um, because we have this really odd thing at the moment where we, we've so, sort of started to talk about class a lot more um, again because inequality has become a big thing, but also in really, really bad ways. Um, so in the US, you get discussions of like coastal elites and the sort of flyover states. Uh, in the UK, you get this whole discourse about uh, sort of metropolitan elites and the sort of left behind regions. And a lot of my PhD sort of looked at that discourse and the ways in which actually regional inequality in both countries actually is really, really is, is really bad like your life opportunities your opportunities for earning an income uh your health um 
vary massively depending on whether you live in like one of those major cities whichever country you're in or whether you live in its hinterland or even further out um but at the same time those things don't uh match up entirely like they're not perfect analogies for class in the present day right you get a lot of a lot of um very poor people and very precarious people living in big cities you also get a lot of relatively wealthy people living not there so it's sort of like on aggregate you get that inequality but in uh but but there's many exceptions to that and um, and one of the i mean one of the interesting things is that uh you know a lot of boomers might not be super rich in terms of what money they have coming in but they have bought a house at a really good time and the house price goes up so in terms of like assets they're quite well off um and they're they've got that real le level of stability as well right because they can't be kicked out of their home in the same way that uh young people can um and actually one th a show that i th sort of thought sums this up quite well and i in some ways critiqued it but in other ways maybe didn't um was i'll get the trailer for it up um was Shit's creek and i don't know if i don't know how many of you have seen um Shit's creek which i think i when i first started watching it i was like okay this is just gonna be uh a sort of rehash of arrest development maybe but actually uh me and my partner got really into it like a few lockdowns back and absolutely adored it like a really really funny show really like warm show that you really just get on board with um and i think the way in which it has this sort of i know it's set in canada um so i don't know exactly where uh they're where they're living in those initial pictures but they very much get sent to Shit's creek which is the like place in the arse end of nowhere um very much the like sort of left behind or sort of white trash area um and so it very much engages with this idea of having like your metropolitan center and your um sort of backwaters which which i think in our cultural discourse generally are really um uh denigrated right um i think if you watch uh most english language sort of visual culture um whether that's tv whether that's film and sort of in our books and stuff as well what you find is that there's probably about three places where it's legitimate to live um you know if a character lives in los angeles or if they live in say new york i suppose maybe washington maybe london um you know, if they live in one of those places, then that's correct. Well done. They can just live their life. Um, whenever you say a, whenever you see something where someone lives in any other place, uh, quite often they're trying to get out of it, and that's sort of taken as a, uh, as sort of logical and correct. And of course they are. Of course they want to move to the big place, the big city. Um, and so was, I sort of found it interesting because I think we are very much living in sort of the world according to Shit's Creek at the moment uh, in terms of our sort of the ways in which we talk about, particularly about inequality and about class. Um, and I think there are ways in which the show critiques that um, in that, you know, the people that lives in Shit's Creek are super human and, um, and actually really nice and intelligent in their own ways, in ways that in our sort of more mainstream discourses we're led to believe that anyone who doesn't live in the sort of metropolitan center is a bit thick we can feel we sometimes we're encouraged to feel sorry for them but whilst also thinking that they're probably a bit thick um and actually you know these sort of metropolitan folks are a little bit airheady um but uh the the shit family right or the rose roses sorry the rose family they sort of grow to love this place um and there are elements where it is that they all bring their sort of expertise their business expertise to this little place where um uh and and sort of use that to you know it, it's very much like shit's creek could not function well economically until the uh rose family arrived 
Uh, and so I sort of questioned that. But I think it is an interesting engagement with what is perhaps the dominant uh, sort of way in which we talk about inequality uh, in the present time, because we do talk about it in that geographical sense. Sienna saying my pessimism grows but day by day at the moment. Uh, it's just people camping against property development. Um, Green houses want house prices to go up. They're not standby. Yeah, like it's like that is very much the 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 big thing. And that, and like wealth at the moment is is interesting because we get we get told quite a lot that um let me find the thing that I was looking forward to. Is it this? Um, let me just quickly look through this for the table that I'm hoping is going to be in this paper that I'm very quickly scrolling through um, by Mr. Thomas Piketty, who often... It's annoying that you can't just search for where is the... Where is the um, the diagram that I'm looking for. Um, is it going to be here? Nope. Just trying to find a quick... Uh, yeah, Ketra Krelek saying that working class in the UK basically gets used as a cultural identity rather than as an economic class. Um, and it's difficult. Um, so a few days ago, uh, Grace... I, I had a brief Twitter spat with um, Grace Blakely who wrote um, Stolen, and whose work I g generally, like, enjoy, um, uh, wrote, a th uh, you know, did a thing about Twitter about um, classes solely about your economic position. And I I think that is often as much a simplification as the the ways in which the right talk about it as though it's only cultural, cause, um, because it, it just sort of, those cult that cultural stuff is really important as well. Oh, I can't find this graph that I'm looking for now, and that's going to really uh, annoy me. What is it? Vote oh, wealth and education. I think that was it. Um. I saw it on Twitter earlier, but I can't can't find it at all now. Um, uh, I have friends whose parents are academics and live in a very middle class way who will call themselves working class because of their family's history in mining and the docks. Okay, so I've got something else I can show you as well. And this is good because you're, you're also suggesting stuff that I can make into little... Um, clips and put on the channel which uh, I, mu I very much appreciate so thank you very much uh, for doing uh, class history family performing arts I think it was ah is this what I'm looking for because there was a really good study about how people perceive of themselves as well as how they actually um you know as well as what the what their actual proper class identity might be said to to be and now i absolutely can't find it at all i think it was in dave o'brien's work but i Okay, okay, so I found one article about it, but I won't be able to I won't be able to access that one, I don't think. Um oh, there was definitely an article in The Guardian that I can sorry, this is super boring for everyone because I'm just trying to find uh everyone say <laughs> everyone saying yay clips. Um Because there was a, oh, there's just some brilliant, uh, 
story about... Oh, I know how I can find it. Because there was another clip that I was going to watch with you all. Um, and it might have it in the description or something. Okay, the only thing I can find uh, is from the Daily Mail, I'm afraid. Sorry to, sorry for that. Um, waiting with bated breath. <laughs> sorry, I finally found it. Um, so, so one of the ways we often... Uh, so our class discourse in many ways is super confused, particularly in the UK. Um, and one of the ways, I mean, naturally, one of the ways in which we ground ourselves in terms of class identity is like our upbringing and our family history and the sort of like narrative of who we are and what our lives are like. Um, uh, but we've sort of moved in an interesting way in recent years in which I think in the 90s, um, you know, uh, even Less than 10 years ago, probably, uh, Owen Jones wrote Chaps, right? Which is on the bookshelf behind me, um, which is his book about the demonization of the working class. And it's all about how... Um, uh, so Chaps being like a uh, slang term for uh, young people who are uh, sort of violent and, and it says here, brash and loutish, um, very much like is very much the equivalent in fact the book it is next is next to on my shelf behind me um is uh nancy eisenberg's uh white trash so chav is sort of the uk version of uh white trash i guess um and in the two in the 1990s and the sort of uh early 2000s i would say uh, like we had a discourse which was all about saying that anyone who was working class was super lazy and a benefit scrounger, etc. Right? They, um, you know, it was this notion of like we're all middle class now, and anyone who's not is very much their own fault. Uh, they got left behind, right? It's that kind of undeserving poor uh, sort of uh, narrative. Um, but I think post Brexit and post Trump, both of which probably weren't in actual fact, driven mostly and certainly not entirely by working class voters, but very early on were interpreted by the media as though they were. Um, and that sort of shift shapes the narrative for a number of years where actually a lot of politicians and stuff uh, and the media suddenly became all about angling towards... Um, working class people like it, this sort of notion of like working class honesty and authenticity uh, there's a great book by a guy called joe kennedy uh, called the authentocrat which is all about the emergence of this discourse where uh, which is sort of populism but sort of a little bit different in which at the moment all uh politicians are trying to speak for uh you know the the rust belt or the red wall is the big thing here in the uk um they're all about speaking for and to and sort of about the working class in a way that suggests they're on the same side um so we very much flipped in not a huge number of years from a discourse which uh which you know if i find um a clip from uh little britain uh which is a show that has not aged well uh in many ways but if i find like vicky pollard from little britain who gets mentioned a lot in chavs like she's very much just this like uh thick working class girl who is sexually promiscuous and not very intelligent uh you know at one point swaps a baby for a westlife cd i think um we've very quickly gone from this kind of discourse to one where actually everyone's trying to pretends that show their affinity with working classness and we've also more broadly in in many ways in, in ways that is mostly very very good we have um developed a discourse where we recognize slightly better than we potentially used to we recognize some of the ways in which people's uh, struggles due to various aspects of their identity potentially um whether that's uh ways in which they are uh, marginalized through being racialized or the ways in which um uh or sort of like 
uh, you know, gender or uh, sexual preference or or whatever, we've sort of started to become much better at recognizing the ways in which those things impact people's lives and therefore uh, the sort of courage that it takes to come through them, right? And we've sort of also started to get that with um, class as well. Um, and, you know, we love that story of the working class kid done good who then found success in whatever way. Um, but there was this really interesting research done by, um, I think it's the research group. So it's a, some, some um, researchers from the London School of Economics uh, who uh, looked at the ways, they were particularly looking at the performing arts. So the performing arts is terrible in terms of uh, people having rich parents and that's the reason that they're um you know that they get to the top if you think of big breakout stars of um recent years like one would be uh phoebe waller bridge definitely a big breakout thing from the uk uh and she's like uh re she's got like her ancestry is like uh like royal no nobility right um but um what they found was that uh, 36 people of, uh, so they, in, they did 175 sort of sociological interviews with people, uh, and they found 36 people who had undeniably middle class upbringings thought of themselves as working class, right? They still took that, uh, identity because that was sort of the story that they told themselves was that it was one of struggle and, um, and I think there's, there's something, yeah, there's a there's a symbolic market for downplaying class privilege in these professions um, of being able to go, you know, now I'm a big actor, being able to do your Oscar speech where you can tell that story of struggle as to how you got there. Um, and 36 is a massive number in 175 interviews, right? Um, and uh, I think there was something about people really going back into their family history, like really, really far and being like my granddad was a minor or whatever um i mean there's uh when actually you know your actual your, your more recent parents that uh that you know managed to send you to private school were were not um and it's really interesting the ways in which we narrativize class um and the ways in which some of this stuff plays into our still terrible discourse surrounding class that we need to sort of work on uh, in the chat, Zombie Ruler zero one two three. Thank you for sticking around. Um, I won't keep you all for too too much longer. I promise. Um, or if you need to go, you are allowed to. Uh, oh, here we go. Phoebe Waller Bridge, Fleabag star Phoebe Waller Bridge is the granddaughter of Sir John Edward Longerville Clark, the twelfth Baronet of Hitcham. While Tom Hardy's private school cost thirty thousand pounds. Wow. Um, yeah, Little Britain, as Zombie Rule is saying in the chat, Little Britain has not ended well at all. Um, oh, a philosophy tube video did come out. Um, I might watch that shortly. I won't watch that on stream. That doesn't seem fair. It's literally the day it's come out. Um, so for those of you that are not in the UK, Little Britain was a sketch show um, which just had, like... So it had... Uh, only gay in the village was one of the characters um i'm not gonna do a 24-hour stream sorry uh sorry sienna uh oh pick 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 what express is here hello uh just popping in to rekindle the fire underneath my pending grand theory of youtube uh solari is about to unload and not to be missed critique of influence culture the game behind the game oh great um i will jot that down um, do you know what it's called? If you know what it's called, let me know, because um, that sounds useful. Um, yeah, because that's sort of what I want to do in my Grand Theory of YouTube video is to, um, yeah, try and work, try and do a, almost to do a Chomsky and Perman's like five filters of media uh, to do that but for youtube you know so it's like do you have a something off site that you can do you have a pre-existing following that you can bring on do you have you know is your work able to get sponsorships um 
and yeah, sort of do think of what the equivalents would be. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We will wrap up very shortly. Uh, that I was gonna, I was gonna watch that. Oh, so, so oh. Abigail's video is awesome. Oh, I can't wait to watch it. I'll watch it uh, after after I've logged off here. Um, two seconds. So I do have some good news that is sort of good news that then is actually not such good news. In that, the UK have just nationalised the trains sort of but also uh, absolutely not at all um and i think this is this is an interesting uh thing in terms of our politics more broadly at the moment is that um so so for those of you that don't know uh the uk until the moment and it's changed slightly during covid uh has had a privatized train system whereby until 1993 I want to say, let's go on British Rail. Don't normally use Wikipedia. Don't don't take this as a uh, indication of uh, how I normally do my research, but it's quick and easy sometimes, isn't it? Uh, so okay, so between 1994 and 1997, um, the British Rail, which used to just run the trains in uh, the UK, because having a nationalised train system is the only real proper way to run a train system, uh, was gradually uh, sold off or or franchised out. And the way it was done was that the tracks and the sort of maintenance of all the tracks and infrastructure uh, was run by, or or, in, or v- until very recently has, has been run by, um, or, or is at the moment, I think there was some change. I think the early system was slightly different. But at the moment, what happens is that there is a company called National Rail, which looks after the tracks if anything goes wrong. Um, and then private companies, which include like Virgin, which include uh, Aviva, includes it actually includes public companies from other countries who run the uh, train systems and transport systems in other countries are some of the franchisees here. Uh, so they get to run trains and make a profit on them in the UK and then use that money to subsidize, uh, you know, trains and buses elsewhere in the world. Uh the individual like journeys, so like you know, the southwest, for example, where I live, um, is franchised out to uh, Cross Country as one of the companies, and Great Western Railway, which is a part of First for anyone who knows First buses and stuff. Um, uh, and this is a really good system if you're a train fran- franchiser because uh, sometimes you get bought the trains, which is nice. Um, although sometimes you can just rent them, so you don't actually have to own trains anyway. Um, you know, the bit where most of the stuff can go wrong, the tracks, uh, that gets looked after by a uh, sort of publicly owned company called National uh, National Rail. Um, and so uh, it's been a very, very good system. Now, one of the big, uh, one, one big thing in the sort of labor platform in the Corbyn, years was the renationalization of the trains um uh nationalizing trains in the uk is hugely popular um sorry i can't spell uh it's like hugely 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 popular i think it's like okay 64 percent here in 2018 of people said they would support renationalizing the railways because it just makes sense because if you've got a private comp you've got a public company doing all the expensive stuff looking after the tracks but then you've just got private companies taking away all the um all the profit off the top uh, from the ticket sales and also um it's trains just the, the trains are what's called like a national uh, natural monopoly right because you actually you know you need to be somewhere in a certain a certain time so if there's two trains running on a track, you're probably not going to just wait 20 minutes for the next train because you're going to miss the place you're going to. Um, so it just just doesn't it just doesn't make sense. You can't have competition in the same way, you know, even within that logic of competition, making services better and more affordable and more efficient. Um, it doesn't it just can't work in the same way with trains unless you have many different rail systems coexisting at one time which you're just not going to have anywhere um 
so renationalizing the railway is a hugely popular thing um and is something that was like a, a real central plank i would say to um the the labor platform during the corbyn years uh and today there was a paper a sort of white paper which is a sort of proposal but it's usually a proposal that the government's very likely to do um published that said that the conservative party who the ruling party in the uk uh are going to well the way it's been pitched is sort of is that trains are coming under state control which is sort of true but at the same time it's sort of not true at all because um what's actually happening is that you know there are some good things in that um the trains are going to be so i think the government is going to be able to like set what the prices are they're going to be able to sort the timetables to make sure things all make sense in terms of you know i don't know if you need to transfer somewhere um but it's still going to be uh private companies actually just doing the running of it so they're going to sort of outsource the actual running of the trains even if they've got less decision making in how much to charge and in what way so it's sort of positive but it's also the sort of half-baked version of um, the main uh, sort of policy of the, of the sort of policy which could have existed in a different you know had the conservatives not won the last election right um but i do think it sort of goes to show the extent to which so there was this thing after actually i'll, ref I'll find it now there's this thing after the 2019 election in the uk where um jeremy corbyn came out and said that you know might not have might not have won the election, uh, but we did win the argument, right? That was, uh, oh, I think he wrote, uh, he wrote that in the Guardian, did he? Um, you know, he said that you know we might not have had a majority, but we did win the argument, um, and it sort of is true in many ways. Um, you know, that got obviously a lot of like liberals, a lot of centrists, sort of really took the mech out of that, um, and I can see why they took the mech out of that because it sort sort of is difficult to say you won the argument if you didn't win the election. But at the same time, um, you know, in the furlough scheme that existed around the time of, uh, you know, or has existed during COVID, um, that is the kind of thing which just wouldn't have existed without those previous years of a lot of people campaigning very heavily for uh, a sort of end to neoliberalism. Uh, and we see that in multiple areas uh, of Tory policy at the moment of sort of policies which sound a bit socialist in some ways the kicker being that they never are the actual proper version of that they're always like a watered down version like with the trains um but I think it's a really interesting phenomenon that sort of happened in our politics lately and it'll be sort of interesting to see where that goes where are we in our in our chat? I think we're gonna wrap things up shortly. I was gonna talk about um cancel culture a whole bunch because um Ben Burgess's book about cancel culture just come out, uh, who is a uh, sort of American uh journalist who I've not seen a huge amount of his stuff, but I've seen a little bit of it. Um I might talk about that next time because I want to read the articles that he's written, even though I won't get a chance to read the whole book. Um, but uh, it is just capitalism with a smiley face. Yeah, um, as Sienna's saying in the chat, um, it sort of takes some of those, yeah. Uh, take It takes the sort of headline of a lot of the ideas without taking the substance. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up a little bit there. Um that was fun towards uh it was fun towards the end to, to we played a bit of the game and then uh had a bit of a bit of a chin wag towards the end as well um oh my voice sounds really different when i set the headphones off uh but thank you so much for joining everyone um it's been really good fun uh my plan is to be back next uh next thursday at seven o'clock again and to do a similar like in my in my calendar i've put seven till ten um if as today it gets to ten two and my voice is hurting a bit i might uh i might stop a tiny bit early but um 
But no, thank you so much, everyone, for for joining. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, ah, oh, Luan ever saying thank you for such a great and chill stream. I hope it's been chill. Um, I know lots of people were doing uh sort of guards of relief streams, and please do go like please do uh go and um uh you know if you have not already consider uh you know working out ways that you can support stuff that's uh you know aid efforts over there but um but i thought i'd i'd do something that was just a bit bit chill and a bit of a bit of light relief i guess so thank you everyone for for joining um and yeah if you'd like to to, to be here again next week i would uh, adore to see you here um so thank you everyone and uh have a lovely friday and a lovely lovely weekend as well try everyone